was still writing. I didn't see that. It's now one minute past uh, nine. Uh, honorable members, uh, may I greet you all and uh, and I want to welcome you all, honorable members, and our department with the staff of the department and the staff of this committee in parliament. And also our visitors. Uh, honorable members, I do feel that um, uh, oh, also uh, I've seen Honorable DM that she has been here in the platform. And then when we're coming to apologies, we'll see who's going to come later. Honorable members, um, today I feel like I must say something. Um, uh, in, in my opening uh, remarks and welcoming you, I want to say South Africa's transition from apartheid to a democratic state has been excessex. In the past 28 years, we have built democratic institutions, transformed the public service, extended basic services, stabilized the economy and taken our rightful place in the family of the nation. Therefore, it is important to remind ourselves that this is hard and democracy, which was gained through the bloodshed of our fallen heroes, such as Solomon Mashang, Steve Biko, Chris Ani, and many others for this reason. We must collectively <clears throat> make it our duty to protect this hard and democratic democracy at all costs. The incidences seen in Stellenbosch University, whereby a white student was recorded urinating of the study materials of a black student at his university residence, goes against our democratic principles of reconciliation, social cohesion, and nation building. It has brought back to some of us memories of, of wound past. Some of, some of us, when sometimes we are sharing these meetings, uh, those wounds, when sometimes does come, you feel like standing up as if you're disrespecting the meeting because the scars are still within in our bodies. This is exhibited by a particular organization challenging the state in court in order to be given a right to showcase the old apartheid national flag. Some of us, we do even remember during the Codessa uh, uh, times when some, uh, they were just getting in riding horses with this same flag. One wonders what this particular organization aims to achieve through this unethical, immoral, and shameful act, which will further divide the nation from all corners. We therefore will continue our work as this portfolio committee to fight against such injustices and indecence of Backwardness. We therefore call of the university management to speedily resolve the matter by implementing consequences management, as there is not place for racism and hatred in our institutions of learning. Honorable uh, members and our visitors, over the past few weeks, we continue to be haunted by incidences of gender-based violence where we see a number of women being murdered in cold blood. I mentioned the name of uh, Hilar Gandhi, 
the most recent being Singwana Mutwa from the Eastern Cape, who was shot nine times allegedly by her partner. We must not forget also in the same province where uh, the daughter of uh, the Honorable Member Kati, that there are also very young women, kids, not also which are being raped and also killed. And the motive is to take parts from themselves. I never ever heard since I was born that these murderers, they do kill a, a man and do take parts of men. Uh, you know, this patriarch issue, these killings, they, these rapes, they are making some of us not sleeping. You can write and 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 you turn, tear off what you were writing, thinking that, what must I say when I'm talking with the nation? Because I'm aware that as you are here, uh, democracy did, uh, came with this all option that everyone who wants to listen to us when we're debating, uh, they must. That's why um, I cannot take it when uh, I'm saying to some other people who have got an interest to listen, and when I'm saying that they must use the channels, and now somebody thinking that they must not be part. You must not be part of this forum with uh, ID and code, but publicly, uh, we are listened by whoever wanted to 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 listen us. And in this thing of uh, these uh, killings of women and kids, we call on the law enforcement officers to speedily deal with the perpetrators and the government to do its level best to ensure that crimes against women and children receive the harshest sentence possible will not rest until the scourge of gender-based violence is brought to its knees. We've seen immediately in some other areas, uh, I'm, I'm aware that countrywide, uh, Limpombo, uh, Houting, same thing is happening. Uh, 10 year, 15 years old girls being raped, uh, being killed. So, but we've seen uh, some inroads in in Limpombo, and even now we've seen uh, the, the the government trying to assist even in Eastern Cape and even in Gauteng. But this thing, it's it's uh, it's it's not only for the police for the government. It started at our own homes that we must uh, be taking part. Uh, when we are seeing neighbors, girls are uh, being harassed, are being killed, uh, we must also notify the police forums, which we need to form those police forums. I'm, I'm telling this meeting today, uh, I'm not myself. When it comes to gender-based violence, uh, some of us who are uh, grew uh, with these things, seeing them, maybe some uh, being uh, escape some of these things. It's, this is a, a very thorny issue uh, and honorable members. Uh, we need to, to protect each other. We need to know, uh, you need to know your, your neighbor. Uh, when you are hearing that there's something funny uh, that is, is happening, you must assist by those words. Um, I'm saying good morning to everybody. And uh, today uh, I wanted to check uh, the apologies. I'm very sorry to, to belong. Uh, uh, I do feel a pain of what is happening in our country. Uh, I'm, I'm aware that prayers are there, everyone, communities, uh, but um, there are animal men, which other uh, folk men are not uh, supporting this, but 
we don't know what's going on in our country. Uh, by those words, uh, can can um, Jabu give us apologies? Uh, good morning, Chair. We do have an apology from um, Mr. Malingozi. Is uh, he has a family bereavement? We also have an apology from Inkosi. He's having connection problems, Chair. And uh, also, the minister is going to join the meeting a bit late due to um, uh, urgent government commitments that he has to deal with in the morning. But he will be joining the meeting. Uh, those are the Thank other problems. Thank you so much. Condolences uh, to Honorable Mashingosi. Uh, honorable members, uh, can. We do have apologies. Uh, I'm suspecting you don't have any uh, problem about apologies. And can a member adopt uh, the, this agenda? Any member? Chairperson? Yes, Honorable Mishan. Uh, I've raised my virtual hand. I, I see you tell you, Gordon. But nonetheless, good morning, Chair. Good morning, Chair. Mm -hmm. Firstly, uh, I would like to concur with your sentiments that you've raised, and I support your sentiments fully. And I want to say no to racism, no to GPV, not forgetting to say no to corruption. That kills, that is a vehicle that kills South Africa. I think you only forget that, but I concur with your sentiments, and I move for the adoption of the agenda. I move for the adoption of the agenda. But, Chair, I want you to, to note that next time you owe us cakes, you're supposed to wear a netball T-shirt and you're not wearing it. It's a fine. It must be minuted. It's Friday today. Thank you. Honorable <coughs> Shongo, thank you for that. Uh, as I was saying that, I was writing and, and, and tearing papers. I, I, I will thank you for that. Corruption and corruption, corruption, corruption. We must not forget every now and then uh, to raise that. Uh, Honorable Mshongo, also, thank you for that. Uh, that cake uh, I can bring if you you insisting, but I was remembering that this is uh, Africa Day, and uh, that's why I'm, I'm wearing like this. I'm suspecting you will forgive me that I'm balancing. I've been wearing these uh, uh, T-shirts even last week uh, when I was going for a funeral. I was our, Every board was looking at me and some, they were asking, when is it coming? Today, I, I, I wanted to recognize the Africa Day, my apology. Uh, any second of the agenda? Uh, Honorable Sondi. Morning, Chair. Morning, Honorable Morning, members. Chair. Morning to the Honorable mm -hmm. Members and the Department. Of course, the condolences mm -hmm. to Honorable Majin mm -hmm. uh, And um, uh, about the T-shirt, Chair, Honorable Mishongo is... Uh, maybe we uh, second the adoption of the agenda. Because they are the small for women, the small size for <laughs> men also. Hey. When it's written, the white pool, um, to us, father, nekai, um, amikai, honorable members, in that note, um, I'm, I'm taking this up, this opportunity to create uh, the office, which is the office of this portfolio committee, uh, DM. Uh, I will give you, tell us what to do uh, as we are leading your delegation. I thank you. Thank you very much, um, 
Honorable Chairperson, and good morning to the honorable members of the Portfolio Committee. Greetings to the leadership of the National Arts Council and the leadership of the department led by the Director General, uh, Mr. Mkize. Chair, we, we're coming to you uh, on this um, Africa month. And we want to concur with the sentiments that you had raised around the issue of the gender-based violence and, and racism and corruption. We, we want to concur with you on all those. Without wasting any time, what I'm going to do is to allow the DG to come and do an overview uh, of the department, and then we will allow the, the NAC to do their presentation. And then I'll come later when we're doing the closing remarks. By then, I'm hoping that the minister will also be here. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, DM. Uh, DJ, can you come and tell uh, what are you in with? Uh, give us your delegation, and then we present. Thank you, DJ. <coughs> Uh, good morning, um, Honorable Chairperson and the Honorable mm -hmm. Members of the Portfolio Committee of the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture. Mm -hmm. I would like to also greet the Chairperson, uh, Deputy Chairperson, and all members of the NAC Council. And then uh, in our meeting, we do have one apology. Um, which the deputy minister have alluded to. So I would uh, greet my deputy minister, Mr. Mafu, and then uh, introduce the rest of the team. <gasps> and that will be the deputy directors general, uh, Mr. Lima, as well as um, Mr. Ms. Khan, as well as um, Ms. Manisa Chekodamba, and then apologize for DDG Kumalo, who is um, uh, abroad uh, on work-related matter in Egypt. She's in. She's in. She's in, DJ. She's connected. She has connected. Thanks, Yes, DM. yes, DJ. Yes. Thank you, DM. She's connecting uh, from abroad. Um, and then we have, um, of course, the office of the deputy minister. Um, which is represented by Mr. Watani. We then have the office of the minister, uh, represented by the chief of staff. Um, we then have um, Mr. Director for responsible for entities in the department, and that is uh, uh, Mr. Tsanyani, um, and then the admin support uh, chairperson. Uh, from the side of the department. Honorable Chairperson, our presentation is a high-level overview of the NAC as per the agenda in relation to their APP. And I will ask the chair, we share that I hope we all can see the document yes. uh, in front of us being shared. Chairperson, we are then indicating that our presentation will be talking to the mandate, financial performance, financial allocations, audit outcomes at a high level as the details will come with the NAC. And then, of course, the governance matters in relation to how we see which is our direct responsibility and ensuring that there is a government structure and how the council is composed. And just at a high level, some of the activities of the website that we conduct. DJ, please, uh, there's something making noise. Uh, Sorry, Chairperson. We will yeah. then talk to the under governance matters, it's just in relation to composition, as well as the oversight, the governance engagements, composition of the executive management, and uh, as well as the issue of composition of the staff. Disciplinary matters, 
at a high level as the detail will come from the NAC, but also just the challenges and what has been done thus far from the side of the department. Honorable Chairperson, the mandate of the National Arts Council is based on the National Arts Council's um, act, um, act, the act that um, talks to the issues on how and what are the responsibilities of the National Arts Council, the NAC. And uh, Chairperson, it is also, of course, the issue of the functions being to allocate the funds, but also to the artists providing that support, also to cultural institutions that they apply to them, as well as the NGOs um, that are related to the sector. And this can cover issues from the issues of um, dance, theater, opera, design, visual arts, and the broad spectrum of the sector but also where possible provide bursaries to the arts practitioners. If we then look at the performance in relation to non-financial performance, and that is the work that they've been doing, the uh, chairperson, you'll realize that there has been a steady improvement uh, from a previous year of 71% to 77% uh, achievement, and the 23% not achieved and the detail will come with the council. On the issue of financials, uh, Chairperson, we are indicating that which we allocate and transfer to the entity, which is the NAC. And you will see that Chairperson, that the allocation has, um, while it was less in 2021, but it has increased in 2021, 22, 253, 437 million rands. If we look then at the outcomes, um, there is a little bit of regression in that uh, there was a move from a clean audit in 2020, 21, um, and then there's unqualified this year with some of the findings. And I think I will not go into detail as the NSC will talk to that. The composition of the board on uh, a chairperson is a bit balanced, as we can see, and it draws people from various areas uh, so that it's got a multiple skill set uh, that it needs, both in terms of governance as well as in terms of the sector skills themselves. So it is led by a well capable and able um, Ms. Clelente Lamini, who is a chairperson deputized by Ms. Desi Dumani. And I'm sure they will be able to then make their full representation. But we can confirm that this board is properly constituted and functional. If we then move to the next um, item uh, next slide please so the skills as i indicated are various skills from the legal uh, to the specialized skills in the sector so the board is indeed a well-balanced board uh, honorable chairperson and um, if we look at it it doesn't matter whether it is a uh, film and media whether it is um, anthropology, industrial relations, yes. um, as well as the representation by the provinces. And so that um, effort is made to cover as many provinces, to cover the whole of the country. And therefore then, indeed, we believe that this is a properly constituted board. If we then look at the oversight activities, um, Honorable Chairperson, you will realize that the council has been holding a number of um, meetings and that uh, continuously they have been uh, having the members who honor the meetings to ensure that the board is functional and that they always correct. Um, so if we look at the number of councils um, as we speak, uh, council members at the end of 2021-22 at 16, and the meeting held at um, 19, 
Uh, you will see then that the number of council meetings, um, which might look higher this uh, financially, uh, under which we're reporting, uh, but it is mainly based on the fact that uh, they had to deal with a number of challenges, uh, particularly related to the PSP, as they were dealing uh, with the implementation also of that project. So that might have resulted in a number of more meetings required. The attendance then of the meetings have always been a good at 79% for this financial year by the members. The amount spent uh, on the council, when we look at it, you'll see that Jefferson, and this talks to the number of also meetings held uh, to, to the pressures that they were facing, and uh, that um, had increased from 3.5 to, from, sorry, from 2.5 in the preceding year to 3.5 in the following year. The risk committee is also functional, as well as the management and the staff meetings were held. The uh, chairperson uh, on governance uh, they did uh, attendance of the CFO's forums, and the CEO's forums have been an order of the day, as well as the chairperson's forums uh, that have taken place, as indicated there. They have been able to honor that and attend to them. How is the executive management currently constituted? And um, we'll see the chairperson uh, based on the fact that there was a suspension of the CEO, then there is an interim CEO, which is Ms. Ma Marion Menam Tembo. And then we've got um, the breakdown then of the interim CEO, which is uh, Mr. Wara, as well as the arts development manager, Ms. Julie. Profile. Then the staff, Honorable Chairperson, if we look at it, uh, we'll realize that um, we have a majority of um, the, the females at 71% and males at 29%. And then, of course, um, a constitution of one Indian, one white, as well as the rest being a, a black. Uh, Africans. If we then move to the what have been the parameters, I will not go into detail uh, Jefferson here, but except that uh, based on the forensic audit, then the board implemented the outcomes and the recommendations of the audit, and they were then able uh, to come to the conclusion of these matters in relation to the CEO while the board members uh, has, um, had uh, left uh, or decided to resign, uh, those who had remained within. And then the hearings, uh, the dates are provided in relation to the CO's process, as well as uh, the CFO. But uh, there has been progress in the implementation of the disciplinary measures as recommended by the forensic audit details will be provided by the chairperson and her council. If we then proceed, chairperson, um, we indicated that um, relating to the HRC, uh, after deliberating on various matters, uh, looking at all the reputational, financial, operational issues, as well as the prospects um, of a success rating to the Tismar hearing, the indication that this matter was referred to council for final deliberations. So the NAC has then um, uh, subsequently um, issued a statement to that effect uh, relating to the separation of the parties, which they have uh, not yet done so, but they will be doing so as based on their uh, commitment to address the issue and keep the public informed. And challenges, uh, the issues of challenges, uh, the issue of um, uh, we do not have the CEO, but uh, they rely on the interim CEO. Uh, after the termination of the contract of the CEO and suspension previously in that regard. And then on the PSP, as we know, we had uh, challenges and there were 37 appeals. Appeals are then dealt with through a appeals panel. Uh, that is appointed by the minister. And at this stage, they have completed all the 
adjudication and this of those appeals, and they are now being uh, uh, prepared for the minister's consideration uh, so that we close uh, this chapter. Those were the 137 appeals uh, in all, but they have all been now adjudicated and finalized. And there will then be a, there is a process by the team to then package those for ministers consideration. Then chairperson, the increased number of council or committee meetings, as I indicated that there was an increase, but uh, that um, as I also mentioned, uh, in relation to the challenges that uh, the NHC was facing. And therefore, then there was an increase in the number of council meetings as we monitored uh, on what exactly is happening and how is the council functioning. So the administration of the PSP by council then related to this increase. Honorable Chairperson, I will uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, <clears throat> thank you, DG. Uh, now can I invite and greet again uh, the leadership of NAC uh, led by a uh, chairperson who's a woman and the entire delegation if uh, she can uh, introduce who's present and um, maybe if she do have an apologies, now is the time we are welcome, Chairperson, with your team. I thank you. Um, good morning, Honorable Chairperson, um, and um, good morning to the Honorable Members of Parliament as well, and um, to our Deputy Minister, Umam Mafu. Um, can you show Show your face, Chairperson. Uh, uh, okay. But, yeah, but if you are experiencing problems, we can switch it off. We've seen you. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I'll turn it off. Thanks. Um, and good morning as well to our DG, Obabun um, Kize. And, and I'd also want to say good morning as well to my colleagues from the department and um, <clears throat> all my fellow board members that are with me from the National Arts Council um, and management as well. Um, with me, um, Honorable Chairperson, I have um, Dr. Sipos Tole. Um, I also have Ms. Kim Matthews, and both of these are um, council members. And then I have got management that is sitting in um, which is the interim CEO, as well as um, our company secretary, Mr. Vincent Mashale. And we are also accompanied by our legal um, counsel as well. So we, that is James, uh, Mr. James Morrison. Um, that is it, I think, from an introductory perspective in terms of who the team is here, um, the team that is here. Um, and I would like to just not waste any time, um, Chairperson, if we can then just be able to go straight into the presentation of our APP, if that is fine with you, Chairperson. Yes, it's fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Chairperson, apology, Chair. Apology, yes. Mr. Men. Yes, Chair, Mr. I wanted to find out if I've noted only three members of council have attended our meeting. Am I correct? And what is the reason? Others are not here. Thanks. Um, thank you very much, um, Honorable Mishomo. And we um, actually, I can see we're now joined by um, Mr. Ashley Lagu as well. Um, he's one of our council members. The other council members, Honorable Chairperson, um, have, have, uh, have extended their apologies. Um, some have indicated that they will be joining in um, at some point in time during the day. But I think the company secretary um, can be able to advise in terms of those, but they will literally, I think the core main, <coughs> core main team that will be with us at least between 9 and 1 p.m. and that have committed, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the members that I have noted. Um, and, and I think perhaps 
we, 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 you know, we maybe can do better as the council in terms of representation when it comes to these meetings and ensuring in particular that all the members are present. Um, but I think maybe due to just other, um, <clears throat> other commitments, um, some of the council members are not able to make it all the time. So apologies for that, um, Chairperson. Yes, um, thank you, Honorable Mshong. We need uh, uh, upfront uh, to put the apologies in order that uh, there's no one disrupt you because seeing that there is a gap, uh, you didn't put apologies for those who are not present with us. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. <clears throat> um, I'd like to hand over to our CFO, um, Jason, if you can please do the APP presentation for the Honorable Members. All right, let me introduce myself. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, good morning, Honourable um, Chairperson and uh, Honourable Members. I'd like to take us through, I, I'm Jason O'Hara, I'm the, the Interim Chief Financial Officer, and I'd like to take you through the, uh, the APP. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is our APP for the 2022-2023 year that we're going to be presenting to the Portfolio Committee. To give you an overview of our presentation, we're going to be talking about the NAC. Basically, we're going to break it down into the mandate of the NAC. Then we're going to move on to our vision and mission. We're then going to touch a base on our values, our purpose, as well as the objectives of the NAC Act. I'm then going to provide you with an executive summary on the amendments to the NAC strategy, um, and then move on to our strategic outcomes, the NAC strategic intent, as well as an update on the situational analysis. Then finally, we're going to move on to the NAC 2022-2023 quarterly targets. You can move to the next slide. That will be broken down into our grant allocation letter, which basically is the allocation letter sent through from DASAC. Then uh, a brief overview of the budgets and the MTF estimates for the 21 all the way through to our 2024 uh, financial years. And then we end up with our conclusion. So I think let's move forward. Okay. The mandate of the NAC, our legislative mandate, the NAC derives its mandate through the National Arts Council Act, uh, number 56 of 1997 as amended. The mandate of the agency is to provide and encourage the provision of opportunities for persons to practice the arts. <coughs> Excuse me. If we have a look at our vision, the NAC is a catalyst in the arts cultural and creative community that supports the free and diverse artistic expressions. Our mission, to be an accessible and responsive funding agency, delivering public value by leveraging partnerships to uh, foster the development, promotion, and sustainability of the arts sector. Okay, the NAC values. The NAC is committed to the following values, transparency, accountability, integrity, caring, and excellence. Okay, the main purpose of the NAC, in redefining our strategic intent and revising the strategic plan, the purpose is to support, promote, and advance the arts in South Africa, contribute to a collaborative society through the richness and strength of the arts, Ensure that the arts are recognized as a key ingredient in developing social cohesion. Enable artists to define their ideas and establish their unique identity. Address past and present inequalities and imbalances through the medium of art. Develop relevant uh, competencies in the new creative arena that transcends both traditional and contemporary skills and to encourage the contribution of artists to enrich the soul of our nation. <laughs> okay, the objectives of the NSC Act. Sorry, can we go back a slide? The objectives uh, of the NSC Act, as per the Act, to provide and encourage the provision of opportunities for persons to practice the arts, to promote the appreciation, understanding, and enjoyment of the arts, to promote the general application of the arts in the community, 
to foster the expression of a national identity and consciousness by means of the arts, to uphold and promote the rights of any person to freedom in the practice of the arts, to give the historical disadvantage such additional help and resources as they require, as they are required to give the, the, the greater access to the arts, to address historical imbalances in the provision of infrastructure for the promotion of arts, to promote and facilitate the national and international liaison between individuals and institutions in respect of the arts. And then finally, to develop and promote the arts and to encourage excellence regarding these. <laughs> okay, amendments of the NAC strategy. The NAC has amended its annual st uh, strategic uh, strategy regarding the following areas. Having learned from many profound les uh, lessons from past, the NAC developed an organizational strategy that ensures redress, improvement, and sustainability in the arts landscape through uh, partners, partnerships. The NAC plans to rebuild its brand and develop a public profile nationally within the arts sector which uh, details the good work undertaken by the entity. This will ensure that potential beneficiaries who need the NAC services are aware of its existence and services offered. The NAC also faces with the reality of limited and finite funds which are unable to meet the needs of the sector. Increasing funding resources will enable the NAC to open access to the sector and allow new entrants into the art funding landscape. <laughs> The NSC has amended its annual strategic document in the following areas. The DPME issued a circular acknowledging the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on all lives, as well as that of the July 2021 unrest. <coughs> Thus giving flexibility for organs of states to review their strategic plans was still fit for purpose. The NSC strategic plan was then amended to take into consideration these factors. The social impact of the COVID-19 disaster on the arts sector exposed the vulnerability of marginalized provinces. The, the widespread closure of institutions highlights the challenges the NAC faces regarding the reach within the, the more marginalized and provisionally disadvantaged provinces. The issue of reach has been addressed by moving away from funding programs to funding disciplines. Okay, this gives us an overview of the NAC strategic outcomes. The NAC Council has revised its three-year strategic plan, resulting in the re-articulation re of the strategic oriented goals. If we have a look at outcome number one, this is to increase access to the NAC by providing support to all sectors of our community, particularly those who are marginalized. Outcome number two is to promote the appreciation, understanding, and enjoyment of and, forest, um, and fostered the expression of a national identity by means of the arts. Outcome number three provides uh, thought, uh, th thought leadership, advocacy, and policy direction on matters concerning arts and culture. Moving on to outcome number four, established and strengthened partnerships for arts delivery as well as promotion. Outcome number five, economic growth in increased through the arts. Outcome number six, strengthen the internal capabilities of the NSC to effectively deliver on its strategic plan. Okay, the NSC strategic intent. Our strategic plan in APP aims to ensure the following. 60% of annual grant funding to be allocated to the six unfunded provinces. 40% of grant funding allocated to, to marginalized groups across the nine provinces. Increase in the number of indigenous art uh, forms supported by the NAC. Increase support in the number of community art centers producing content or training on indigenous, on indigenous arts. Increase the number of art platforms programming and showcasing content. Rolling out shared help desks across all nine provinces. A cumulative 79% increase of approved projects from 302 to 1,287 over the next three years. This would require a cumulative increase of 86% in funding over the next three years to 514 million. <coughs> Excuse me. 
updated situational analysis. The arts and culture sector was hard, uh, hardest hit by the national lockdown due to many of the projects relying on gathering of face-to-face -face interaction. The ban on such gatherings brought the sector to complete halt with the desperation being de deeply felt by the entity. This, this has become an, a noticeable social and economic de uh, dilemma for the industry. The level of funding the NAC receives is not equitable to the size and contribution the sector makes to the country, and yet there's an expectation that the NAC to fund most of the cultural modes, and albeit with grossly limited funds to receive from National Treasury. While the digital divide continues to be a challenge to the sector, the entity is working vigorously to acquire user-friendly technology solutions and a grant management system that is easy to navigate by those living on the margins of our society. These user-friendly technologies uh, to smart devices will also go a long way in assisting art practitioners to interact with the NAC's application platforms. <laughs> Okay, moving on to um, <clears throat> our third section of our presentation, measuring our performance, our quarterly targets, outcome of the first quarterly targets. <clears throat> if we look at the annual targets of 2022 and our 2023 financial year, our outcome as we're looking at would be 60% of the annual grant funding allocated to unfunded six provinces. And our first quarter would be issue call for funding and review applications. Quarter two, allocate 60% of funding equitable to six underfunded provinces. Yeah. Quarter three, disperse first installment to approve compliant beneficiaries. And then quarter four, disperse final installments to approve compliant beneficiaries. Our second target, 40% of grant funding to indigenous art forms in marginalized areas across the nine provinces. <clears throat> in quarter one, Issue call for funding and review applications. Quarter two, allocate 40% of, of funding equitable to marginalized areas. Quarter three, disperse first installments to approve compliant beneficiaries. And then quarter, uh, quarter four, disperse final installments to approve compliant beneficiaries. Our next target, introduce one new indigenous art form per annum. Issue call for funding and review applications in our first quarter. Quarter two, allocate funding for one indigenous art form. Quarter three, disperse first installments to approved compliant beneficiaries. Quarter four, disperse final installments to approved co uh, compliant beneficiaries. Moving on to our next target, <clears throat> approve two capacity building programs on indigenous knowledge system and intellectual property per annum. Question, um, quarter one, issue call for funding and review applications. Quarter two, allocate funding for capacity building programs on the indigenous knowledge system and intellectual property. Quarter three, disperse first installments to approve compliant beneficiaries. And in the final quarter, disperse the final installments to approve compliant beneficiaries. Our next target, approve two community art centers producing content or training on indigenous arts. Quarter one, we will issue, um, issue a call for funding and review the applications. In quarter two, allocate funding to approve two community art centers producing content or training on indigenous arts. Quarter three, disperse first installments to approve compliant beneficiaries. And then in quarter four, disperse final installments to approve compliant beneficiaries. Okay, moving on to our next targets. 332 approved grants. Issue call for funding and review the applications in our first quarter. Allocate funding to the 332 approved beneficiaries in our second quarter, and then disperse the first installment to the approved compliant beneficiaries in our third quarter, and disperse the second installments to the approved compliant beneficiaries in the fourth quarter. Then we have approved five art platforms for programming and showcasing content. So again, in our quarter one, we will issue the call for funding and review the applications. Quarter two, allocate funding to five art platforms. Quarter three, disperse first installments to the approved compliant beneficiaries. 
and in the final quarter, disperse the second installments to the approved compliant beneficiaries. <coughs> Our next annual target, one research input, two position papers, and three articles presented, produced, and supported. In quarter one, produce one article and contribute to one research input. In quarter two, produce, present one position paper and one article. In quarter three, produce, present one article. And in quarter four, produce and present one, art, uh, one position paper. Our next target, host one art uh, summit and host four round tables and five interviews. Quarter one, host one round table, discussion and conduct two interviews. They're the same in quarter two. In quarter three, we'll host one art summit and host one round table discussion. And in quarter four, we'll host one round table discussion and conduct one interview. <laughs> Our next target, three art disciplines assigned with respective partners to showcase work. In quarter one, identify and engage three partners. Uh, quarter two, sign the MOUs with three partners. Quarter three, implement the partnership. And quarter four, monitor the implementation of the partnership. Our next target, nine help desks established with strategic partners across the nine uh, provinces operational. Identify in quarter one, identify and engage nine structures per province to host the NAC help desks. Quarter two, sign nine MOUs per province. Quarter three, implement the NAC help desks. And in quarter four, monitor the implementation of those help desks. Next target, 10 block bursaries signed and implemented. 60% of the 10 block bursaries to six underserved provinces and 40% shared between three remaining provinces. In our first quarter, no target has been set. <clears throat> in our second quarter, issue a call for local bursary funding. In quarter three, review and approve the bursary applications. And in quarter four, 10 signed MOUs to, to approved block bursary institutions. Okay, our next target. 10% <laughs> increase in the number of job opportunities. In quarter one, issue call for funding and review applications. Quarter two, contract with approved compliant beneficiaries. Quarter three, monitor report, reporting by beneficiaries. And then quarter four, report on the number of job opportunities created. Our next target, 10% increase in the number of funded beneficiaries. In quarter one, issue call for project funding and review applications. Quarter two, issue call for local bursary allocations block bursaries, contract with approved and compliant beneficiaries. In quarter three, review and approve local bursary applications, monitor reporting by beneficiaries. And in the final quarter, reports on the total number of the number of beneficiaries funded. <coughs> Our next target, 60% positive uh, perception of the NAC impacts. In quarter one, conduct stakeholder perception survey and analyze the survey results. In our second quarter, report on percentage of positive perception and impact achieved as per the survey results and draft brand communication strategy and incorporate survey findings. Quarter three, implement brand communication strategy and in quarter four, implement brand communication strategy. Our next target, 60% positive coverage of the NAC through print and electronic media. 60% positive coverage of the NAC print and electronic media tracked and monitored through news clip reports. In quarter two, 60% positive coverage of the NAC print and electronic media tracked and monitored through news clip reports. And again in quarter three and again in quarter four. Okay, our next target, 60% marginalized areas reached and aware of the NAC mandate and applications process. Quarter one, publish 60% of NAC content related to the mandate and the application process in targeted publications that reach marginalized areas. Track and mo monitor through news clips. 
Again, we, we do the same in quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. And then coming to our next target, unqualified audit outcome. Quarter one, there'll be no target. Quarter two, unqualified audit report. Quarter three and quarter four will have no targets. <clears throat> Moving on to our next target, review organizational structure and conduct staff training and development. In quarter one, submit a roadmap and review organizational structure for approval, conduct skills audit, and develop the training plan. In quarter two, implement approved roadmap and organizational structure. Quarter three, continue with the implementation of the approved roadmap and organizational structure. And then quarter four, monitor staff performance in relation to the new structure and draft the progress reports. Our next target, development and review of HR policy and procedures. Quarter one, review, develop two HR policies and update relevant uh, procedure documents. Quarter two, again, approve two HR policies and relevant procedure documents. And again in quarter three, and again in quarter four. Okay, our next target, continued enhancement and maintenance of the GMS system. Planning the enhancement of the GMS system and application the digitization process with uh, prospective business units. Quarter two, implement the enhancements of the GMS system and the digitization of the application process and then test the, the enhanced function, uh, functionalities. Quarter three, monitor of the efficiency of the enhanced GMS system. And then in quarter four, assessment reports on the enhanced functionality. Our next target is quarterly assessment reports. Assess ICT systems, infrastructure and security measures and draft assessment reports in quarter one. Quarter two, implement quarter one recommendations based on ICT assessment reports, conduct quarter two assessment and draft reports. Quarter three, implement quarter two recommendations based on ICT assessment reports, conduct quarter three assessment and draft reports. And then in quarter four, implement the quarter three recommendations based on ICT assessment reports, conduct quarter four assessments and draft reports. <clears throat> Our next target, four audit and risk committee meetings. Right across the board from quarter one all the way through to quarter four, you will see we'll have one audit and risk committee meeting. Moving on to this slide, this is the, the grant allocation letter that is received from DASAC. Um, as we've seen, the DG has presented it in his presentation, the allocations that are given to the National Arts Council. Let's move on to the next slide. This just gives a brief overview to honorable members of the, um, of the budget and MTF estimates for the period. It shows us our audited outcomes um, from the statement of financial performance uh, point of view, right from 2017, 20, uh, 2018, all the way through our MTF period to 2024, 2025. As you can see, we, um, we're looking at an estimated outcome in line with the, the allocation letter of 120, approximately 121 million. This gives us the overview, the budget overview and MTF out, outlook of the statement of financial position, um, stemming right from the 2018-2019 audited outcome, all the way through our MTF period to our 2024-25 financial year. Okay, in conclusion, <coughs> excuse me, the NSC is committed to, to fulfilling its overall mandate as a public institution, which involves promoting, developing, and enhancing the arts in our country, as well as assisting those previously disadvantaged uh, systematically. The NSC has eased the application process and removed red tape that created barriers to entry for the multitude of art practitioners seeking funding from the entity. Our focus on underserved provinces and marginalized art forms makes the NAC well posed to transform and grow the art sector. Funding remains a challenge and creates huge frustration to art practitioners who cannot get funding because of their limited resources. I thank you very much.
e, Tengür e, Mr. Jensen e, Chairperson of the NAC What next do you want to report to us? Um, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, and um, thank you, Jason, as well. Um, the chair also speaks to um, other items that we would have liked to cover, Honorable Chairperson. So if I can please ask um, my colleagues to please bring up the BIG report and the public protectors report so we can also be able to give feedback on that. Thank you. Thank you, do so. Um, Doc, can you please bring up the presentations? Thank you. CEO, please take this one over. Thank you. Good morning. Deputy Minister, good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, Honorable Members of Parliament. Good morning, Chairperson. Who's talking with us? One face, Mursun Dumbazan. Madam. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I hope you are seeing me. I no. am Marion. Not, not yet, not yet. Can you see me now, Chairperson? Yes. I am Marian Mbinam Tembo. I'm using Vincent's computer. We're sitting together. Uh, okay. The interim CEO. Thank you, Chair. Who's Can interim CEO? Thank you, Chair. Okay. I'll be taking the Honorable House through the presentation, reporting back on the implementation of the public protectors recommendations. The presentation outline is background to business innovation group investigation, findings of the big investigation, and recommendations of the big investigation. I think, uh, Doc, can I please have the public protector first? This is the big one. Sorry for that. The presentation outline is the background. Uh, point of order, Chair. Yes. Chair, uh, apology, apology uh, Mama. Chairperson, I, I don't have this presentation unless uh, my email didn't come to me. I don't have this presentation. Which Chabu, one? I didn't, the one that they're uh, presenting it now. Not even seen it. Uh, I don't have it. And our our policy as a committee, if you don't have it, unless it's only me, any members who have this, it's fine. But I didn't get it. <laughs> Chairperson, uh, the, the, this presentation was sent to the members. Let me just send it to Mr. Mkong because it was sent in the package that yes. you sent me. Okay, go on. Uh, uh, because Honorable Mkong is not going to read it now if he didn't see. Our apology, Honorable Mshongo. Uh, please go on. Thank you, Chair. It's the background to the public protector investigation, the findings of the public protector, the proposed remedial action by the public protector, the progress on the implementation of the public protector remedial action, and the status of expired projects and the surplus fund policy. 
Next slide, please stop. <clears throat> Uh, the public protector received a complaint from Mr. N Freddy Nyatela in 2017 on behalf of South African Roadies Association. Allegations from Sarah were against the former CEO of the NAC and were as follows. Abuse of power and subversion of due processes by the CEO of the NAC. Falsification of the South African Roadies Association by the CEO, lack of adherence to and compliance by the CEO to the Promotion of Justice and Administration Act 3 of 2000, and the Bartolet Principles by the CEO, maladministration and corruption, disregard of the National Arts Council Act 56 of 1997 especially the objects of the council. After engagements by the public protector with the SARA representative, Mr. Nyatella, the parties agreed that the public protector's investigation would focus on two issues as follows. The first one, whether the former CEO of the NAC submitted an application to EXCO for partnership funding using the complainant's name without his consent? And if so, whether such conduct was improper and constituted maladministration? Two, whether there was impropriety and abuse of the expired projects and surplus policy by the NAC in the distribution of the surplus funds resulting in prejudice to the complainant? The investigations were conducted by the Public Protector's Office through exchange of correspondence, meetings, and interviews with the CEO of the NAC, the risk committee members, and chairpersons of the board. Next one, Doug, please. With respect to the first key item, the findings were as follows. The allegation that the former CEO had submitted an application on behalf of Sarah represented by Mr. Fred Nyatella without Mr. Nyatella's knowledge or consent was substantiated in the findings. The public protector found that although the CEO submitted a proposal for partnership funding to EXCO, using the complainant's documents from the rejected application without his knowledge or consent. The application was not falsified or forged as alleged by the complainant. The complainant was not informed by the CEO about the annual partnership proposal since the policy does not explicitly provide for such an obligation on the CEO once the need has been identified. The public protector's report stated that although the NAC's policy permitted submission of the proposal to EXCO without an obligation to inform the complainant, the practice itself was inconsistent with the provision of Section 33, Subsection 1 of the Constitution, and Section 3.1 and Section 3.2b of PAJA which provide for a reasonable and procedurally fair action. The public protector found the reasons preferred by the CEO to justify not informing the complainant, who was the subject under the annual partnership application, not acceptable. Finally, the public protector findings were that the CEO's failure to inform the complainant before submitting the proposal to ex of a partnership founder amounted to improper conduct as envisaged in section 182.1a of the constitution and maladministration. Point of order, Chair. Point of order, Chair. Yeah. Chairperson, I'm the only one who's following this presentation, which I'm to mail it. They've changed it. This is not what it's on the presentation. Please, Honorable Mshongo, let's wait and then when we're doing engagement. 
were in the middle of the presentation. Yeah. We, 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 you need to raise when you're coming to the discussion. Let's give them the chance and then we must we must comment and tell them what what is it that they didn't put and what is it now that they are putting. Because this is a very important report. Yeah, it's an important report, but if I've, I've just received it now, I went through it, the same slide that we are at, I don't have it, the job that the Chabu, Chabu just sent it to me. I'm saying it's wrong for us to accept presentation which are, are being tabled just to date. It's what I'm raising. We're supposed not even to entertain that. No, it's not presented today uh, as we are saying that in the slide. Can can we, can we Honorable Mshongo, uh, when we're getting to the discussion, we must, we must say what you want to say. Let's not disrupt the, 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 the presentation because uh, if there is a slide that was not in, uh, we're just not going to uh, say that it must be taken out. Let, let, let's have a chance of all of us after the presentation of, of this report. I'm pleading you, Honorable Member. <laughs> Go on. And my administration as envisaging section 4A1 of the Public Protector Act. Next slide, please, Doc. On the second uh, issue of impropriety and abuse of expired projects policy, the findings of the public protector as follows. The allegation that there was impropriety and abuse of expired projects policy was substantiated. The application by the CEO on behalf of Sarah without informing them and obtaining their consent was found to be improper. The application by the CEO using a rejected application for funding by the complainant to which the complainant had not received a formal response with reasons from the NAC was found to have resulted in perpetual prejudice to the complainant. The implementation of the expired policy by the NAC was found to be inconsistent with the Constitution, PAJA, and National Treasury regulations, and therefore was procedurally unfair as it did not take into account the rights of the applicant, but afforded NAC employees, management or council, wide powers to deal arbitrarily with applications for surplus funds, in particular partnership funding without their knowledge and consent and therefore had the potential of abuse. The conduct of the CEO and the NAC was found to amount to improper conduct in state affairs as envisaged in the constitution and constituted maladministration in terms of the Public Protector Act. The proposed remedial action by the Public Protector was as follows. The Minister of Arts and Culture had to take note of the report containing the findings and remedial action, and as executive authority had to ensure that the remedial action was implemented. The chairperson of the NAC had to take note of the findings of the report and within 60 days of issuing of the report, one, ensure that inconsistencies identified in the expired projects policy are addressed by setting a process in motion to amend the policy and promulgate standard operating procedures on the implementation of the policy so as to align with relevant legislative framework. Two, amend and strengthen the policy in order to close the gap that exists in it, so as to prevent the NAC staff and other NAC stakeholders from exploiting the policy contrary to the ethos of fairness, equity, transparency, competition, and cost effectiveness as envisaged in section 217 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. Three, generally align the internal policy toolkit with relevant legislative framework, such as section 3310 
and 217 of the Constitution, Section 511B3 of the PFMA, Section 31 and Section 32B1 of PAJA, National Treasury Regulation 16A8, and Public Service Regulation 13C of 2016. The chairperson of the NAP also had to, within 30 days of issuing the report, ensure that a letter of apology was issued by the CEO to the complainant for the manner in which he was treated by the NAC, including the formal letter of the outcome with cogent reasons of his rejection. Number five, within 30 days, the chairperson will ensure that the CEO put in place a declaration of interest register for all NAC employees relating to the projects they had initiated since 2015 to manage any conflicts of interest. Implementation of the recommendations. One, the minister took note of the findings and ensured the remedial actions were implemented. Two, a letter of apology was issued by the CEO to Sarah and Mr. Fred Nyatella for the way he was treated by the NAC, including cogent reasons for declining his 2014 application. It should, however, be noted that Mr. Nyatella was unhappy with the reasons as they change from failure to provide all compliance documents to the ANC to not, the ANC not funding infrastructure. ANC. The chairperson initiated the process of amending the expired projects and surplus funds policy, wherein all the inconsistencies with relevant legislation were identified and corrected. All identified gaps have been resolved in the newly revised policy that is in place. The declaration of interest register for all NAC employees relating to the projects they have initiated since 2015 to manage conflicts is complete. The general alignment of the internal policy toolkit with relevant legislation is complete. The policy includes a standard operation team procedure for utilizing the funds. Next slide, please. The same thing, next one, Doc. The status of the expired projects and surplus policy. This expired projects and surplus policy has been amended and approved by the council as per the PP recommendations. There is a process in place where a new policy entitled utilization of funds from unclaimed projects policy has been drafted to replace the expired projects and surplus policy once the council approves it. Next slide, please. Thank you, Chair. I think there's another presentation, Doc, the big one now. You must try to be faster because we must have enough time to interact with uh, these presentations. There are too many. Uh, when we are presenting, try to be faster. We want to uh, interact with the presentations. Thank you, Chair. Um, sorry, sorry, CEO, maybe just to um, interject. Um, I would like to say, just based on what Honorable Chairperson is saying, perhaps maybe just go straight to um, the actual findings and what um, we then have done without giving the background, because I'm sure Honorable Members probably have an idea of what the BIG report is about. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think you've got the people report. Can you go to the next slide? It's, this is not a big report. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Doc, that was the big report. Let's just go down to the findings. I think they are yeah. slide further down. Okay. 
Okay, let's next one, next one, next one. Okay, next one. So the, the quick background on this big report is that before the Mr. Nyatella had presented his case to the PP, he had gone and lodged a complaint with the Department of Arts and Culture regarding the submission of his failed application for funding by the CEO without his knowledge uh, or consent to export for partnership funding. Uh, the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture had appointed the Basic Innovation Group big to investigate their complaint. From there, we will go straight to the findings. The findings were that there was no evidence to suggest that the NAC staff members were involved in any irregularities involving the grant funding application submitted by SARA, the Human Secular Foundation, the Legacy Hotels, and Just for Juniors. The management of the NAC was correct in not awarding SARA a grant as they failed to comply with the grant funding policies and procedures for their application. Uh, the recommendations from the big investigation was that the, was that the NAC conducts an audit to establish whether all awards made under the expired projects and surplus policy adhered to all applicable acts and regulations, and that the projects awarded achieved the objectives of the NAC. The NAC conducts training awareness and workshops with staff and other stakeholders during which the policies and the procedures of the NAC are explained. The NAC should, as a matter of agency, seek a legal opinion on the validity of the expired projects and surplus policy. The policy might be in breach of the PFMA and Treasury regulations. If funding received from the national government is not declared and disposed in terms of the regularity framework applicable. In addition, the policy could be used to favor particular grant applicants as the discretion for awards rests solely with the NAC. The enhancement of these aforementioned policies will, amongst others, address or broaden guidance on the requirements for grant funding and or submission of applications for funding, the categories for funding and thresholds, and the administrative and technical requirements for applications. The issues and instances that might render applications administratively and or technically non-responsive should also be made clear in the policies and to applicants including giving detailed feedback to applicants and the beneficiaries on the outcomes of their applications. Where applications are unsuccessful, reasons of such must be stated clearly with recommendations that could assist applicants and the beneficiaries with future applications and or resubmission. Next slide, please, Tom. On the implementation side, the projects funded under expired projects has achieved the objectives of the NEC. The training and awareness workshops have been performed with stakeholders. With respect to the surplus policy, Section 513B is the legal guide on dealing with policies, and this review recommendation has been implemented. The policy does not provide broad guidance on the requirements for grant funding. The policy includes a section on reasons for disqualification at review stage. Thank you, Chair. Um, Honorable Chairperson, we are done with the um, BIG report. Um, the last presentation that we wanted to give was with regards to an update on the disciplinary hearings, with, with, excuse me, which effectively is around the leadership of the NAC. So um, if you don't mind, can we go straight into that presentation? It is the last presentation, Chairperson. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Doc? I think you may be muted, Dr. Stolle. Please, can you unmute yourself? Yes, thank you. Honorable Chairperson uh, and members, the DM and the DG and the Minister and our colleagues from the NAC, thank you for this opportunity. I will take the honorable members through the presentation 
uh, that also uh, led to the disciplinary action being taken to um, on, on the CEO and the CFO. And I will try and move as fast as possible. And um, just to recap again, this 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 relates to the uh, presidential employment stimulus um, um, program, which commenced in October 2020 which was to offer support for employment and uh, retention in the cultural and creative institutions. And there was an allocation of 100 million rand on uh, stream one, and then an allocation of 200 million rand in stream two. Uh, this council was then appointed uh, 1st of January uh, 2021 on, uh, to start its four year tenure. And then we discovered quite a number of um, challenges and, and, and serious problems with regards to the PSP one was that it was oversubscribed and the, and the oversubscription uh, was resulting from the initial 300 million rand that had been allocated uh, and the NAC had approved applications to the value above the, the 300 million uh, rand and it went up to 600 million and that's then uh, left um, the NAC with the 300 million rand shortfall and uh, just honorable chair that was where then the, mis the miscommunication started in the media because they then wrote uh, they were riding on this 300 million rand shortfall as if there was 300 million rand that was had gone missing at the NAC that had not been accounted for and because of that it um there was a total of 1374 applications that had been approved by the previous council or by the NAC let me say um uh, which only catered but the amount only catered for 613 applications that had been approved and published and excluded the 761 approved applications that were yet to be published. But on top of that, uh, we, 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 we discovered that there were a further 829 applications that had no plausible reasons for having been declined. Um, we then sought to, to, to seek legal um, advice because we were now encountering the issue of how do we address the 761 applicants that had been approved but not um, published um, uh, in comparison to the 613 that had been approved and published. And the legal opinion that came back to us was that um, we had the duty to honor all the approved applications, which means then we had the, the duty to honor a total of 1,374 approved applications uh, with, the, with the money that we had, which was 285 million, because the other one was the 5% for administration. It, it further said the legal, the legal opinion that um, if the NAC were to exclude the second group of, uh, of the 761 approved beneficiaries, then we would be in contravention of the Constitution and the state. And, and the Point of order, Chair. Chairperson, I see you are looking long. I, I, I. Our phone, the agenda, we're not mazula. So, so, I mean, the presentation, I mean, to long, I mean, and the long. Mr. Chairperson, no, we cannot. We cannot listen. They must table the presentation that they gave us. They so cannot play with us. Do you mean no, we must follow you? I don't listen. I must read on my time. I saw your person. Go 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 just leave, just leave the order. meeting, if so. Hey. You are, you are, I mean, I'm doing my work. You can't go to phone. 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 Then let's wait. No, let's we mustn't wait. wait. We must not allow them to present this thing. That's not like your thing. We must get presentation 72 hours a day before a meeting. It's, it's totally uncalled for. We prepare whatever that I have, not what are they present to me now. We are not even the chairperson of our phone. Which is Lale, I mean, I'm your Honorable chairperson, Mama Wolo here. Yes, sir. Honorable chair. Hi, hi, hi. What is going on to honorable members? <laughs> Honorable Chair, Mama Wolo, can you please Chair recognize me? I've, I've asked for order. I've called for order, Chair. Uh, Honorable Songo, Honorable uh, Sibia, Honorable Mama Wolo, in that order. Okay, and, thank you. 
Thank you, Chair. Chair, I thought you were really calling order. Chair, we cannot be taken under a carpet. I'm doing my oversight work. I've confirmed with Chair. Even this presentation, it's new. I've even confirmed no honorable fun take. It's new. Now they can cannot play us. We cannot entertain something that is new in our meeting. We've chased different entities to give us a presentation in advance. We cannot just listen. An honorable to Dazong Chelguta must leave them. He's not the chairperson. She's not the chairperson. She must respect me. I was calling for order at Nyege Suzong Omsong. I'm asking for yes. order. Okay, honorable Omsong. Uh, honorable Anna, don't say uh, even if some member irritated you, you must try to to be cooled down and mind the language, because uh, uh, I'm the chairperson. I was wondering what is going on, uh, Honourable Tutu. I'll, I'll, when all you have said what you want to say, uh, I'll, I'll 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 give the, the the order. What must we do? Chairperson, if it was um, the, the, the right channel, they suppose not to table this report. You gave them a chance to table a report. So let's wait until they finish and raise our concern after they have finished to table their report. Thanks. Honorable um, Maloma. <laughs> Chairperson, thank you very much, man. I think um, you have ruled on this matter, and I don't think we should be going back and forth about it. And the other thing is that Honorable Tongo must learn to respect women when they're on the platform. This thing of him always insulting women on the platform cannot be tolerated by us men who are supposed to defend women and children in this country. I mean, he's doing his oversight, the DA oversight. We don't care about it, whether he's happy or not happy. But now we're happy with the presentation. It can continue, Chair. And I think you, can, you, you must rule on this matter. You must never, ever, ever come back again. This thing of him saying people are not reading must come to an end, must come to a stop. If we are mute, um, some of us in this meeting, it doesn't mean we're stupid or we don't read. We're saying the meeting, Chair, must continue. You have ruled on the matter. He must learn to respect women. If he now not He's abusing women and children. But now we will not allow it here on this platform. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable. Point of order, Chair. Point of order, Chair. Can I rule? Uh, you can't put point on, of order on top of other one. Let me no, rule. It's a new one. It's a new one, Chair. No, no, this one I, is a new one. I, I need to uh, rule uh, the first one. Okay, and the first one is fine. Yes. Okay. Honorable members, uh, when Honorable Mshongo raised this, uh, I have said I'm bleated with him because here we are. The what we wanted that uh, NAC must come and present to us. It was about these presentations. As we're sitting here, uh, we are aware what is going on, and NAC uh, some reports, some not all. They didn't present to us. And we cannot say it's correct, but because uh, these other reports which they are presenting today, for instance, this PSP, uh, it, this is not the first time of this report presented to this committee. It was presented by the department. It was presented by themselves. So I don't, I don't see any problem that we must listen. Maybe they, they want to give a, us an update because as we're sitting here, this is a lot about the NAC. And as this committee, uh, who have been since inception of COVID having this presentation. So uh, maybe with your respect to Honorable Mshongo and the Honorable members, Let's let's note that they didn't uh, give us some of their presentation, but for the interest of this committee, that there's a lot that is happening in the NAC. Uh, let's just be lenient in order that uh, where we are thinking that is just about an up update and upgrading the information that we're having. Let's allow that. 
but also honorable members in future, we must respect each other. And there is a chairperson, when somebody is raising a point of order, I need to take that point of order. But also I did pleaded to honorable Mshongo and uh, I was thinking that he, whilst he has uh, just keep quiet then, he did uh, agree that I'm saying let's get on because this is the day that we, we need to unpack everything uh, concerning, especially here we are with this NAC new board because of this PESP problems. So this the report which they are tabling, this is not the first time, honorable members, we, are, we are all can confirm that uh, let's be patient, but let's not notice that UNAC, you didn't uh, send, for instance, this report, which we are talking to it, but uh, with your respect uh, to you, honorable members, let's, let's, let's uh, come to an end this is the last presentation. And then when we are debating or questioning or contributing, we must um, try again to, to remind the NAC, this is not going to be the first time about us reminding them, how are we working as this committee? They must start to the department. The department must uh, caution and coach the, the NAC and then coming to the to the committee, they supposed to be uh, on one par, knowing what what is it that they must come to us. I do notice and recognize that some of the uh, documents that are presenting here are, are documents that you are keen to 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 interact and close uh, the, the, the discussion with the recommendations. I'm pleading you, honorable members, that if uh, we see something which is not the norm, let's have a way of ending it, not have um, the way that you are uh, treating each other. When one member sing an abnormal issue, we must uh, give him or her, and then if we want that, as I'm proposing that, let's recognize that UNAC department, we don't know what happened to you and NAC. This is not the first time that we ask a department that they must always caution and look at the, the these boards when they, they come to the committee that everybody is in order. With that I'm pleading that let's let's give them finalize this report and denote and 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 interact honorable members with your respect. Uh, that's my ruling, honorable members, especially to your honorable Shongo, uh, in, in your point of order. And then you're still having a follow-up point of order. Thank you, honorable Shongo and honorable members. Chairperson, thank you very much. And Chair, I'm not, when I call for order, I'm not respecting Abu Mama. I think it must be clear. You are Umama. When I say point of order, I'm not saying you are out of order. It's a procedural matter that I'm raising for you to give me an opportunity to speak. Mm -hmm. Now, when Honorable Mama Bulo Azong Chelogutti, I service Abu Mama. I think it's uncalled for to use that because while I'm calling for order, we cannot choose from show it's recorded, it's clear. Now let's not use privileges mm -hmm. that are uncalled for to say I'm suppressing a bomb. It's not about that. I think he must withdraw that. I didn't suppress mom to to honorable to. What I did, I said I've read the report. This report is new, and because that is the first thing. Another order, chair, I want to note our objection. As a DA, we are not going to allow NAC to be treated differently. The rule says presentation must come 72 hours before. Now, who, why are they so special? That's why that deals. Note our objection. 
we've chased different committees, uh, different entities when they give us new presentation. Now it's what I'm calling no doubt objection because this it's it's a point of a rule. The rule says you must get this present. I've consulted no chabu. I've consulted Mama Honorable Member Swam. They're saying the same thing. These are new both. I've allowed the first one. Now I cannot allow even the second one, Chairperson. Thank you. I do take your points, and I cannot say that you are giving them the special treatment. And I've, I've alluded on what we are saying, Honorable Mshong, and I was saying because uh, we call them to come and report some of the things that they are going to report uh, uh, is the things that they didn't really give the, the information in time. But I was thinking that Honorable Mklongo, they, these issues are, uh, have, have been uh, wanting them to come and present. And as you hearing me saying that the department, uh, you must look at this NAC, especially this new board. Uh, and Honorable Mshongo, this is not the first time that you caution NAC. And I don't want you to put a, a word saying that we're giving them special treatment. It is not. There's no one can get special treatment in this committee because in this committee, we know that we want information uh, in time and Whilst I was thinking that uh, the other information that they are giving us, uh, I pleaded with you and you did understand. And now I do understand when we are coming for the second time, because this PESPs, uh, this is not the first time that we are getting, but I was not sure whether they are coming with a uh, upgraded information, which they didn't present to us. So I didn't shy away. I didn't, I didn't protect them from the very onset I've said this. So uh, irrespective of that, we are saying EDA, uh, let's, let, let's try to be a committee uh, of parliament, uh, not to committee of ANCDA, of a uh, whatever when we are correcting things, let's be united uh, on corrections because even these other honourable members they cannot claim that let's give these uh, uh, visitors of our good selves a special treatment. Uh, let me pause on this and ask honourable members that they must all reflect on this problem that uh, we are given by NAC and also the department must chip in after honorable members voice the, 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 their unhappiness about what today is happening. Uh, thank you honorable members and honorable strong but I will plead at you uh, honorable members of this committee. Le le let's wait on uh, uh, wearing caps of our political parties. We used not to do that because when thing is wrong, it's wrong to all us as honorable members. I'm pleading that, that honorable members of this committee, let's engage and let's come to conclusion. What must we do now? I thank you. I will give all the members uh, uh, to, to say something. Um, I'm, I'm seeing Honorable Denise, Honorable Veronica. Uh, I, I don't, I don't say. I will, I'll, I will ask each member if you don't uh, raise your hands because this is very crucial, Honorable members. Honorable Sondi, Honorable Malomani, Honorable uh, Sibia, Honorable Adams. At at the end, uh, the leader of the department, Honorable. A DG of the department, because this is a very important uh, day that I was thinking that we want to, to engage and we want to correct whatever ENAC is not doing well. Uh, let's take it in that spirit, honorable members. I thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. May I continue? 
yes, you, you must honorable member. Thank you, um, Chairperson. I I would just want to comment on the situation that we are faced with now. Uh, first of all, I think what we should do in the future is that when we, um, it, it is a learning experience for us as committee members, when we um, approve the agenda, we must, we must make sure that the presentations that we received um, is 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 in line with the agenda, and we must ask the uh, entity, or department, whoever is in front of the committee, are there any new information uh, presentations that they have not submitted, so that we can check bef before we continue with that meeting. Um, otherwise, we if we continue now, we set a bad precedent, and any every uh, meeting we're going to have a situation similar. We have to debate whether we should continue or not. In principle, member member um, Stronger is right. Uh, you know, uh, we should not allow any new presentations that we have not had the opportunity to look at and read through and to prepare questions. Um, we sh should not actually allow that. Um, but I think going forward, uh, when you make the ruling after our comments, Chairperson, you will have to make the ruling, given the fact that we have allowed the entity to start the uh, almost halfway through the presentation or i'm not sure how far they are you will have to make the call but i think we must just as a committee uh, uh help one another to say we have to get back to our own rules we've done it in the past we must just confirm with the agenda all information is with us and then we committee will have to decide how we're going to deal with future and new information that is not presented to us prior to to our meeting but the principle on principle of the matter member uh, members Sepo and Slongo is right chairperson thank you thank you chairperson can I speak I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry, Honorable Veronica. Yeah, you must speak. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you, Chairperson. I also just want to concur with my colleagues. My hand was up previously. Um, I think we cannot receive a new and updated information while we are um, busy with the meeting because we need to also have time to go through the presentations. And we do need to stay within the committee um, rules. So, otherwise, like um, Honorable Dennis um, said, we are going to create a, pre a president that, um, uh, for future meetings. So, that's just... Thank you. Th thank you, Honorable uh, Veronica. Uh, I'm seeing that we are struggling with the, the network. Uh, the, the next Honorable Member... Uh, it's honorable Zondi. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, I think uh, the honorable members are correct uh, on the procedure of the uh, committee presentation and the timelines uh, on the submission. However, Chair, uh, all of you, uh, but in particular, Honorable Joseph, uh, summarize it uh, correctly uh, to say or even yourself, that uh, the presentation was the, was, was received from uh, by us, but there were additions. But the additions are there in the agenda share. We adopted the agenda that had those uh, these additions that they are dealing with now. On top of the chair, we 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 allowed them to start, and they are. In fact, this is the last uh, 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 updated uh, 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 presentation. And uh, we can't say, they, we, we can't chase them away while they, we allow them to start and uh, they are at the end of the, the presentation. But members uh, are, are, are correct to say, let us not allow it um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the near or far future. Let us stick to our our, our procedure as a, as, as a committee. But chasing them while they are in the middle of the presentation, whilst the additions are there in the agenda that we adopted, I don't think it will be fair to us 
that have uh, listened to the presentation. Thank you, Honourable, uh, thank you, Honourable Member. You have put your point uh, loud and clear. Thank you, Honourable Sondi. <laughs> Uh, Honorable Manoman. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. I don't know because I, I don't see my, my video. Is it on? Yes, you are on. Okay. okay, can I switch it off as you've already seen me because I've got the challenge yeah. of network. That's right. Yes, Honorable Thank you. <laughs> Let me just greet everyone that is present. I think Honorable Mshongo is correct to say they can't present a new presentation that we never received. This is what we're doing. It's not for the first time where we said an entity must go back and then submit the presentation to us so that maybe we can look and check for it so that we can participate after their presentation so that we can ask question. My view is that, yes, the other one, they did send it to us, but there were additions. We know that one will speak on that when we do to, when we go to the correction. But my, 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 my question is that I see as if that means NAC, whatever that is doing, I don't think they are consulting or they are working together with the department, but we'll hear from the department when it speaks. But what I can say is that on this presentation, I do agree they were maybe halfway or quarter way because we don't know the presentation, how long it is. But my request is that can they forward to us so that we can read it? If maybe we do have questions, or whatsoever, we'll just forward it to the secretary regarding this presentation. We'll forward it to the secretary and then they'll respond in writing regarding this one. They cannot just present because there are any, no other things that we can maybe go and speak to this presentation as we never received it. My request is that only this presentation, not the other presentations, only this one. That's my request, Chair. That's my submission. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Maloman. Honorable uh, Sibia. Um, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, uh, my apology for not raising my hand before. Uh, but there is a problem. If we have agreed upon with a, an, a, an agenda, if there are new additions on that on that uh, presentation, we can't stop a, a person and tell the, that person that you no stop there, go out because we, you are adding the, the presentation which we don't have. It's not it's not correct. It's not correct. And uh, if every time we are saying it to somebody who is doing a presentation. Point of order, point of order, point of order is embarrassing, is embarrassing. It's, under, it's undermining us, it's undermining us. Let's give the person a chance. If that person has given us an information which was not submitted to us, let's take it as a committee and own that 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 uh, presentation that it was not fair. Let's go back and please come back with a, a, a relative one. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Isabia, <clears throat> Honorable Adams. Other legacy hands must be down. Honorable Thank Adams. Thank you, Chairperson. I don't know uh, if my. Honorable Thank Mishongo, you, Chairperson. Can you hear me, Chair? Just a moment, Honorable Mishongo, your hand must be down because um, um, I've, I've said, I've started with you, with all these members, and now I'm going to go to the department. And then any other follow up, I will see those hands. I'm not yet uh, even say anything. Yes, Honorable Adams. Thank yes, you thank very you. Much, Jefferson, yeah. can you hear me? Yes, we do hear you. I did connect to my video, but I can't see my face. I don't know. We do, you. we do your face. Thank, Thank you. We do, Thank we you do so see much. your face. Okay, we can take it off. We can contribute now. 
Thank you, Chair. Chairperson, and greetings to all protocol observe. Chairperson, um, it is really um, long overdue from uh, the NAC for this presentation. So we, re we appreciate the presentation, which is long overdue from NAC. We would like them to present to the committee um, the presentation to us that they sent, sent it in a con con Comfortable time. So for us to read, it is very bad to follow a presentation which is flooded, which we don't have in time to read. We need the information for our good self and to, uh, to the committee to know what is happening in the entity, but not allowing new additions in new future, in the future. <clears throat> We listen to them. Let's allow them, a uh, chairperson, to finish. Uh, I also support the proposal of uh, 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 Honorable Malumani to send the last presentation they present to us, but also proposed that we continue on what we received from NAC. I thank you, chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Adams. Honorable uh, the Deputy Minister or the DG, who's leading the, the delegation. Thank you, Chichi. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. And thank you very much to honorable members. I think, let me first um, start by um, acknowledging the, the input from the honorable members and apologize upfront on behalf of both the department and the NAC for the updated presentations that have not been forwarded. Mm -hmm. Because what has happened here is that it's the presentations that you have, but they have updated presentations. Like this presentation now that they are dealing with, this part that they are dealing with is what they have updated on a presentation that you have. Now, probably in, in their hindsight, because this part that they are dealing with on this presentation is something that was presented to the committee before. It's, it's, it's a recap so that by the time they get to the reasons for the DC and what has happened, they remind the members of what has happened before. Why did we have a DC? But the mistake that the, the, the NAC has done and the department is to make sure that this updated presentation is given to the members because these presentations are for the members and the members have got a right to get this presentation. I was going to then say, Chair, with you, maybe because the members then are uncomfortable with this part of the updated, the presenter must go straight to the, present, to the report that the members have. Uh, and present that part, but still send the updated presentation to the members because it is important for members to have this updated presentation. It is, up, it is up to the portfolio committee then after they have received the report, whether then they would want to say the, the, the NAC must come back, we want to go and look back at this report. It, it is the decision at the discussion by the members, but I, I was going to plead that let's allow them to present and finish. If we are uncomfortable with this part of the updated, we then say to them, go straight to what you have sent to us, present that part and leave the updated until you have sent it to us. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, DM. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't think when DM has put this, that it did you still want to say something um, can 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 honourable no, covered. Yeah, okay. I'm fully covered, Chairperson. Can yeah. honourable members tell you that now the ministers join the meeting? Um, honourable members, uh, you know what what is very important in any other forum in any other meeting is to respect each other, respect the views of each other. It cannot. Uh, make us uh, to 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 fight. Um, let me take this opportunity, also, honourable members. Uh, when honourable Mshongo raised uh, this thing, uh, because 
according to our agenda, we want them to tell us what is going on in the NAC. That's why we've called them. So when I was even saying that uh, as this uh, committee, this is not the first time that we're getting uh, some of the presentations, but as, as honorable members, they've noticed that these up, upgrades and updates were not forwarded to us. That's why I was then pleaded, and I'm suspecting Honorable Mshongo uh, did understand. And now when it comes to uh, the, the last uh, presentation again, it was the presentation that made that everyone in this meeting, let alone Honorable Mshongo, noticed that this now presentation was not given us as members. But that's why I was saying that this is not the first time getting this presentation. But the, 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 the only thing I even said, maybe because we have serious uh, questions that we want to ask from ENAC, maybe this information was going to assist us whilst we've got a principle of not taking presentation which were not presented to, to our, our members uh, in order that we must uh, discuss with informed information. So by the, these honorable members, I'm suspecting that uh, they must not continue with this, this one presentation and maybe seeking to you honorable members that um, because we know what happened uh, uh, about these um, PSP, SPs, uh, we know about this 300 million, what happened, we know about that 761 and this 16613, it is the thing that we started to argue. And I'm, I'm aware that as these committee members, we are aware that the outgoing um, board uh, left us with this, and that's why we wanted to hear from themselves. But today we're here, what they've done about the processes, which as this committee, we ask that investigations must happen uh, after our oversight. And we're sitting here now, wanted to interact with that information. I'm suspecting, honorable members, that uh, we are all aware that we cannot not to respect our decisions of 78 hours uh, presentation. But today, uh, the NAC, even themselves, I don't think it's nice to to you as leaders uh, who are uh, in this board that every now and then when we are here, you are being cautioned by these members because uh, it cannot be another rule when it's, it's you, honorable members. So uh, honorable members, I want to put to you that can we continue and, and ask questions on the relevant a presentation which we did get and and on the relevant questions it's when then uh, that these other updated information they can tell us uh, verbally because they are inclusive of other presentations and they are up, up Date and upgrade we hear when they are responding to us. I do feel that all here we want to, to check how far the NAC has gone because it was the, 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 the purpose of this meeting that they must tell the implementation of all what is in front of themselves. Uh, uh, if I can say uh, I want uh, views now of the members. To me, I would love that we must continue and we must stop in the presentation that it was not presented. But uh, I want uh, that members can 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 
can say something. I've seen the, the hand of Honorable Mshongo. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I concur with you. They must present what they gave us and on the agenda. We have approved the agenda. That's why I was so hard. And it's not because I don't respect members, but because I prepare myself Anything that I receive in advance, I have my own notes. Something that come, I think Mom Adam put it clearly. You cannot follow on the dashboard if something is new and whatever. Now, I, I support that they've done the BIG, they've done the CO issue. What you've requested, it's done. Let's go to questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mishang. Honorable Adams. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I totally agree with you and also with... Um, Member uh, Honorable Maslongo, let's continue what what they have uh, sent to us and uh, uh, the agenda that we adopted. They start with a presentation so that we um, and we already uh, um, find yeah, ourselves is. with the presentation that they sent. So. Uh, let's continue with our questions and let them, uh, they can stop now with all the other additions that they are, uh, new additions that they are they, uh, uh, um, put on on their presentation because we, we only received that presentation which is um, on the agenda. Mm -hmm. my, my proposal will be that we continue with our questions. I thank you, Chairperson. Can you all... Put down your hands now. Honorable members, uh, uh, this is how honorable members, being leaders and adults, are uh, supposed and correctly to do what we've just done in future. Uh, when we see abnormal issues happening, uh, we must raise them and we must understand that. Um, to be here, we wanted to get uh, what the agenda says. So all the members, I'm suspecting even those who spoke earlier on, your Honorable Denise, your Honorable Veronica, your Honorable Loman, Honorable Zondi, you were saying that we can because we've adopted the agenda, but the disturbance, it was the new information which was not given to us. In, 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 in that now, honorable members, I'm thanking you the way you, you handle uh, the meeting. Uh, this is how we're supposed to do every now and then. Uh, honorable members, now uh, we are in that uh, time now that we must uh, ask questions in order that we must interact with the report. Now, honorable members, I'm calling hands. Already I've seen two hands. Um, honorable Mshong, Honorable Veronica, Honorable Adams, Honorable Malomane, um, hey. on, Honorable uh, Vuiseka, Honorable Sibia, Honorable Zond. There's some bodies saying, Che, who's that? It's the, dep it's the deputy minister, Che. Oh, we have a deputy minister. With, with respect, Chair, before you allow the members uh, to come in with the, with the questions, the report that was on the table, the, the big issue was this first part, which was updated, but that report, there is, a, there is a part of that report that was circulated. I thought you were going to allow it to be presented, the part that was circulated, the DC process. Oh, I was thinking that, oh, okay, no, you, you are right, Honorable, because the DC part of it is the one that we want to, to be given the updates. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, D DM. Uh, can the hands going down? This is this is a, a very hectic day today, but we must, <laughs> under, we must understand, Honorable Members, Take down your hands, please, 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 please. Yes, uh, I'm suspecting it was, uh, it was, is it not was doctor uh, who was presenting, please present uh, what we want 
don't do a recap that you didn't present to us. Uh, to you, presenter. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm going to bring it up. Um, just a second. So, and, and thank you so much for giving us the opportunity again just to, to, to come back to the presentation. We're going now straight to the section that uh, led, led the PSP to have an investigation and to then have disciplinary he hearings. And I must then apologize then if that presentation that is here now is not exactly as the one that you have. I must let me then apologize up front, but we are now going straight to the section of the disciplinary um, uh, uh, invest the forensic investigation and the disciplinary uh, process that followed thereafter. I won't go into the detail. We already know that we did appoint a forensic invest an audit firm to conduct the forensic investigation. And then there were findings. And these findings um, dealt with administrative findings and some dealt with finance and governance, which I will get them uh, get in, in, into them. But the investigators did discover a number of administrative failures attached to the PSP program, and also failure to adequately resource the PSP project with competent staff. And that also there was a lack of adequate oversight and review process, which resulted in non-compliant projects being approved. And also there was failure to meet the timelines for the delivery of the PSP and also failure to manage and monitor the process, such that accurate information in respect of approved applica applications were correctly captured in the grant system. On the governance and, and financial findings, uh, there were contravention of, contravention of section uh, one and one two of the National Arts Council and failure to observe council resolutions. There was also non-compliance with section 57C of the PF PFMA, in respect of ad, uh, ensuring adherence to the, to the system of internal control. There was also failure to take effective and appropriate steps to prevent any irregularities in the adjudication process. And there was failure to provide financial oversight regarding the implementation of the PSP with the allocated budget of 285, 285 million, resulting in overcommitment amount of 637. And I must stress again what I said earlier on, that is where, this is where uh, the problem started because there was a misinterpretation of the full commitment vis-a-vis -vis the amount that was there. So when, when, when um, the narrative went outside that there was 300 million rand missing, um, it was with regard to the overcommitment, not that there was money that had been missing. And um, I can say just because if I don't get a chance to say it, to date we have dispersed 293 million uh, 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 rands. Uh, to over 1,300 beneficiaries uh, with 21,000 and more uh, jobs that came out of that. So we have even went, we've gone above the 285 million that was allocated to us. But there was also failure to ensure that the system of internal control was carried out. And there were, there were conflicts of interest in respect of, the, of some former council members who were in the previous council who contravened Section 85 of the, of the NAC Act. And just finalizing on the governance and fin financial findings again, the investigation also found that no funds had been misappropriated at the NAC, the point I've just made again. No new council members were found to be conflicted. The investigation confirmed the findings of the state law attorneys that all council members appointed from the 1st of January 2021, and whose organizations were funded from the PSP, and had declared their applications were not conflicted as they were not part of the adjudication process of the PSP, which was concluded by the 30th of December 2020 before they joined. We then, um, uh, having received the report from Mazaz, had to then look at um, where, uh, where was the um, action, appropriate action needed to be, uh, to be taken. O of course, as we have said, that there were council members that um, were now in the new council that had been found to have contravened um, uh, uh, um, in as far as the, the PSP adjudication process. Uh, so we dealt with that. And then we also had to look at the senior uh, uh, management uh, with regard to how they also manage this PSP process. And 
Um, we then also wrote to the minister uh, that there were two council members that uh, we needed to now deal with and we needed guidance from the minister because the minister appoints the, con the appoints council and we may not then be the, the, the right people to, 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 to do that. And um, the minister wrote to the council members, which is uh, Ms. Tovoz Lenokabe as well as Mr. Michael Arens, to then explain um, to the minister um, why he shouldn't take an um, action with regard to what has been uh, tabulated in the in the audit investigation. And um, so Ms. Nokabe uh, subsequently then, um, when the minister then um, said that we must deal with it as council, and then having then referred it to to um, the, the legal firm that we had appointed to deal with prosecutions, uh, they did find that there, were, there was a uh, there was a point to to take them through a process. So they were um, no guy was charged with gross misconduct and alternatively gross negligence in the in 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 as, in as far as failure to comply with section 11.2 of the Act or cancel resolution by conducting actual evaluation of application. So these council members were then found to have been involved in the in the evaluation, which is contrary to the Act. They are not supposed to be evaluating any application. So the the he hearing uh, proceeded on the 1st and 2nd of February 2022 before an independent chairperson who's a practicing attorney advertisements. But on the 2nd of, um, on, uh, on the 2nd of February 2022, uh, the, the hearing continued because um, Nokabe uh, opted not to attend uh, the, the hearing and, and she had withdrawn from the proceedings, basically. On the 3rd of, of February, uh, Ms. Nokabe wrote an email to the Minister of, of Sport, Arts and, and Culture, which was now also in, re, in, in, in response to the, to the letter that she had received from the Minister. But in this case now, she was now tendering a re resignation from the Council of the, and she copied the NAC. And so on the 3rd of February, then the NAC informed the initiators that Councillor Nokabe had resigned and also instructed the initiators to terminate the disciplinary process against her. And Michael Arense also had the same charge. The misconduct hearing in respect of him proceeded also on the 1st and 2nd of February before an independent uh, chairperson. On the 2nd of February, Councillor Arense, uh, 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 a pro inquiry proceeded in his absence after he also decided to withdraw from the proceedings. And then on the 2nd of February, uh, uh, he sent a letter of his immediate resignation as a council member to the minister. And then on 2nd February, the NAC then informed the initiators that Councillor Arons had resigned and there was no need to further proceed with the, the hearing. On the part of senior management, um, our focus really was on the two most senior executives in the organization. Of course, um, guided also by the report that came from the, the audit uh, or forensic investigation report and the the legal firm of attorneys, GMI, that was now processing all of this, had found that there was sufficient evidence to, to, to proceed uh, with the charges against uh, this CEO, Ms. Rosemary Mangope, uh, who had already been suspended in February 2021. And uh, the charges that were laid um, um, against um, Mangope, one was of gross misconduct or alternative gross negligence relating to her failure to ensure that the system of internal control and financial management were carried out within her area of responsibility. Number two was also cross misconduct or cross negligence in that she failed to comply with accepted recruitment processes or practices when appointing Ms. Marilla as senior project manager. There was also a, a third charge uh, relating to gross, gross misconduct, alternative cross negligence in that she failed to provide adequate oversight in managing the PSP program. Charge four was really the relation of duty and gross misconduct uh, and negligence that she failed to take corrective action against panel members who did not meet their obligations. Charge five was the relation of duty, alternatively gross misconduct in that she failed to manage the project risk. And that um, charge six was misrepresentation, alter alternatively gross dishonesty or gross misconduct uh, in the in the what she was presenting to Exco, uh, so there was misrepresentation of facts uh, to Exco. Charge seven was misconduct, uh, alternative gross misconduct, 
um, in that she failed to manage and execute her responsibility in respect of the PSP. And those were, um, were adequately addressed in the, in the agreement that was signed between the department and, and the NAC. And then charge eight was gross misconduct, alternatively gross negligence, in, in that she failed, to, she failed to act with fidelity, honesty, and in the best interest of the NAC. Um, the disciplinary hearing of the CO then commenced in December 2021. The hearing proceeded before an independent chairperson on 14 December 2021, then on 7, 8, 9, and 10 of February 2022, and then 23 and 25th of March and, and 4th of April 2022. As, as, as honorable members can see that this hearing was just dragging and dragging, and there was also no end in sight as to when it would be completed at at, at any point in time. Following a disciplinary process and the subsequent conclusion of, of a settlement agreement between herself and the NAC, Ms. Mangoba is no longer in the employ of the NAC. The terms of the settlement agreement will be published as per agreement with, um, uh, with Ms. Mangoba. She has agreed that we can, we can uh, publish the terms of, of that settlement because there is um, a misinformation in the media as to exactly what was in, in the agreement. And um, the, I just want to get back to uh, this, the, the, the conclusion of, 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 the, of, the, of the process itself without it going to fully fleshed up, uh, to findings and sanctions and all of that. During the, the hearing, uh, we then um, were approached then by our firm of attorneys who were the prosecuting attorneys in, to say that um, um, the counsel of Council of, of Ms. Mangope had approached them to seek um, a, a, an amicable solution um, to, to stop the, the process and, and, and reach some, 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 some kind of settlement. We, we, we got the letter from the attorneys and it went to the chairperson. The chairperson then referred the letter to the HR subcommittee, uh, which I'm also part of, chaired by advocate uh, Makosi Ngosi. And um, to say the attorneys of the CO uh, want to, to circle so that we can conclude this. We looked at this and we also called the, at our attorneys to say, take, take us through uh, of what has happened in the hearing and, and, and why we think that um, we should be looking at an alternative solution. Um, I won't go in into the details to and all into what, what happened in, the, in that hearing, why uh, we, were, we had to now to, to reconsider. But what we then paid more attention to was the extent to which um, the NAC was continuing to be financially exposed. And um, as I had said that, let me just re relate back to my comment about the 285 million. Initially, we had 285 million only to deal with the PSP. But already we had paid um, um, 293 million to beneficiaries, which means we were slowly but surely depleting available funds of the NAC, even outside the money that we had from the PSP. And this process of the, um, I'm sorry, Chair, if you hear uh, goats, um, there are goats, Amazon outside, I'm at home, I'm seeing, and I've got perfect net network. Um, yeah, but there's um, Ian Buzla outside uh, at home. Um, so already we were slowly, slowly uh, running out of money. Uh, we had already uh, overexposed ourselves in the PSP program in terms of just money when that went to beneficiaries. But the legal costs from the investigation to the hearings and everything were just keep, they keep on piling. So by the time that we received this, we had already spent 423 1,422 rands and 43 cents just on the legal cost. There were further estimated legal costs for continuation of this disciplinary hearing, which um, we didn't know when it would um, finish. And I must say that even when it started, there were always delays about the wanting this document, wanting a record of all the, the council meet meetings of 2020 and meetings of 2021 every time there's new information that is being requested from us to provide and the hearing keeps dragging and dragging and dragging. So by that time, we, we, we estimated that the total cost for just the disciplinary process 
will be closer to a million rands if it continues. And then we also looked at what would have happened if then um, whatever the finding is, let's say there is a finding, a sanction against her, then she takes us to the CCMA, there will be another uh, 830,000 uh, rands just on the CCMA proceedings. And then also estimation of legal costs at the labor court, if she proceeded to the labor court, we would be also looking at another million. And then if she proceeded to the labor appeal court, we're looking at another 800. So we looked at all of this and we came to a figure of about 3.4 million rands that we think the NAC will have to start looking for and we didn't have, we didn't have that money. And, and the HR subcommittee took this to ASCO to say that we think that uh, we really should consider and, and stop this before we even bleed a, a, a feather. But we, ne we need to make sure that whatever we do uh, is uh, it does not further expose the NAC to unnecessary financial risk. And we also looked at um, what if, if this if this had gone to the CCMA and at the time by the time the CCMA concludes, and we knew that the CCMA would never grant anything over over uh, than twelve months pay. But we then said, no, we will circle. We will only be prepared to go six months pay, failing which we proceed with the hearing and no other added elements, no access to computers, as it is said in the media. It was only six months pay. And we said, this is what it is. Take it or leave it. Otherwise, we proceed with the hearing. And they took it. And that was really the, 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 the settlement. So that is the background on, on, on that. And of course, I've spoken about the media articles. There is nothing further and closer to, to, to these articles uh, about 65, that she would be paid until 65 years and that she's got other benefits that form part of the settlement. And we didn't take kindly to this article because when the journalists wrote to us, we did respond to them. And we are, we are now going to take this to the Ombudsman for an ethical journalism because it's creating unnecessary havoc. We've had we have we've had enough of the PSP uh, since this this council started, and it is is painful for us that um, in 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 May we are still dealing with having to to explain uh, and misinformation, which is really the issue here. But um, just to recap, there is nothing any closer to what has been said. It was a take it or leave it six months, uh, and and um, um, and, and that was it, and that's where, that's where we were with that one. And um, with regard to the to the CFO, and um, the CFO didn't um, intervene in the middle of the, the hearing. The hearing went on. Uh, he was charged with two charges and suspended from February 2021. One charge was gross misconduct or gross negligence or gross dereliction of duty in that he failed to ensure that the system of internal controls and financial management were carried out within his area of responsibility. I mean, the exposure of six, up to 600 million was totally, totally uh, unacceptable. And one wouldn't expect from it happening um, in front of the CFO that is supposed to look, manage those risks. But there was also cross misconduct in terms of charge two, or negligence or deletion of duty in that he failed to act with fidelity, honesty, and in the best interest of the NAC in managing his financial affairs. We've been exposed over, including all of the, the appeals and what we have had to, to incur uh, from court processes. So the, his disciplinary hearing commenced on, in December 2021, and the hearing proceeded before an independent chairperson uh, on the 24th, 25th, 28th of, of January 2022, 14, 15, 16, and 17 of March 2022. And then following a disciplinary process on the 9th of May 2020, the chairperson of the disciplinary inquiry issued a ruling of guilt against the CFO, which is in favor of the NAC. The chairperson of the disciplinary inquiry ordered parties to submit submissions on sanction on or before 27, uh, 27 of May. And upon receipt of the party's submission on sanction, the chairperson of the inquiry will issue a ruling. We have asked for dismissal uh, with regard to this one. And um, so that really is the 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 the, the, the status uh, ari uh, arising out of the uh, out of the PSP. It has been a painful process for us, and we would want to put this behind us. The CFO presented uh, um, what we think is really a, an exciting and um, um, strategy and annual performance plan that uh, we think is going to change uh, the trajectory with regard to. Um, what we've been asked to do 
as the NAC, and we would like to be given that opportunity now to just focus on, on, on imparting the mandate and, 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 and making sure that we do achieve our vision and mission in the tenure that we still at the time that we still have, and then be, um, um, be judged at the end of our tenure, having put all of these issues aside. Um, there is no vacuum in, in the NAC. We do have interim managers uh, uh, in, the, in, in the name of CO and CFO. Um, um, uh, and what has really been a problem for us is really the hearings that are, that are underway. And we are now ready, uh, as soon as we conclude with the CFO and the CEO, we are now ready now to go and seek um, uh, uh, experience CEO, CFO uh, in, in the market and, 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 and try and capacitate this organization. Our, our strategy has already identified positions that are needed in the company uh, so that we can be fully um, staff complemented. I think um, that, is, that, that is it uh, for myself. And thank you, Chair, for guiding and to getting us back to make sure that we, at least we do complete. And thanks, DM, for reminding the chairperson that um, part of that main presentation had to deal with this latter part of the presentation. Thank you. Um, thank you, advocate, and thank you to every one of you. Uh, the meeting was not just a smoothly a meeting because of uh, what you have just said, that irrespective of that, honorable members, they did come to a conclusion that as we are saying, you, even yourself, you want that this chapter must be closed, but it cannot be closed without the oversight uh, members' role uh, have uh, put the flesh and, and the correction and the understanding uh, of how are we closing this chapter of the NEC. Uh, even to us as these honorable members, we've seen that uh, it was one of uh, these board members that you arrived uh, in a work where there was something which was not right, but till today, I'm suspecting true guidance of honorable members. And as we are saying that we are going to go back to the department, we're hoping for the best. Now, honorable members have seen that uh, already honorable Mshongo's hand is up, honorable Veronica, honorable Zondi, honorable Malumane, honorable Adams, honorable Sibia, in that order, honorable members. But I must, I must caution members, sometimes some members are raising hands even before I give them that chance. Uh, you, sometimes I will be feeling that am um, I out of order? Let's wait until we are asked to raise hands because I nearly <laughs> ask that am I out of order? Thank you, Honorable Members. <laughs> Honorable Mshongo? <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Chair, you are in order now. <laughs> you are in order. We apologize to raise hands in advance. Please, we've been eager to ask questions. We apologize. We are not out of order. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I, I don't want to welcome the presentation because when you update a presentation and you don't tell us that you've updated, you're hiding information. I don't welcome that. That's not good governance, firstly. I'm not going to welcome his interest dodgy. You give us this, the next day you give us this. I'll give you an example, Chair. I'll go to the actual slide why I'm talking about this because you cannot say expiring project. Let me go to the actual uh, slide. They gave us a slide that says uh, status of expired project and surplus policy. When you go there, they're saying a neutralization of funds from unclaimed project. But their, their status... The project that they gave us, they're saying status of the same project, expired project. They're saying expired project has been amended and approved by council. But the presenter said it's going to be approved. You're dodgy. 
It's recorded here. You said you are going to sit down. That's dodgy. That's hiding information. That's misleading parliament. Now, I cannot approve and support people who are dodgy, misleading us. On this one, no, it's something like this. It's going to be amended. It's going to be approved, but it says approved. I'm not sure which question to ask. Is it approved or not approved? If it's approved, when are we going to get a copy? Worst of all, leadership, the, uh, the leadership is not here. The council members are not here. Only two council members are here. Three council members are here. Another one came later, which is it shows good. They don't want to account to us. There's, they've been hiding. We even get the media statements that are saying they're misleading. Why are you waiting for the media to give us information than for you to give us information? Now it shows good. You are not practicing good governance. Open and transparency, it's not there. You cannot update information and tell me that I must still ask. I'm reading my minutes, I'm reading my uh, presentation, I'm preparing myself for meeting. I don't want to be spoon feed 11 hours with an a, 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 a call for information that I didn't prepare. Now the minister, uh, Dr. Sitole, is saying uh, it's a narrative of mismanagement of fund. In other words, that, narrat na that narrative was given by the minister for information, Dr. Stolle. Because the minister went out to say there's mismanagement of funds. That's narrative that was given by the minister. And why you don't give us information? This six months, how much is a six month paid? You don't tell us, you are hiding information. What is six months payment, the deal that you have? What is it? You don't tell us. I must ask question for you to tell us. Now, you don't give us information, you are misleading parliament and you are hiding information for us to do an oversight work. You do deals that are dodgy. That's why they'll say you gave them laptops and other things that we are not even aware of because you are dodgy with your presentation. You are not honest to us. Your, your presentation will approve the expired project. You don't give us information and you are saying it's amended. Today it's not amended. When is the ETA? When are we going to get a copy? I need clarity on the abolishment. Sometimes you say it has been abolished. Sometimes it's not. It's a, what is it? You know, don't play with words. Abolished or amended, that expired project. And the surplus policy. Chair, page two, go to page four of their financial allocation. I wanted to find out maybe the question is, does the NAC funds infrastructural project? Do they fund the infrastructural project? Go to your page four. They've mentioned that they granted NAC, it has declined the application to purchase lighting, stage, and training equipment. What is the reason if you grant finances for, for, for uh, infrastructural project? What does that mean? Are you lying or abusing of power to us to deny Sarah the opportunity to do its work? Why there was a deal that it's what you do on your left, you must do it on your right. Why there was a deal for the CEO only, not a deal for others? Now, it shows, Minister, that this forensic, you call it a deep forensic, invest, it's not deep. It's not deep if that deals. Let's not play with words. That was not a deep forensic investigation. That was a deal forensic investigation. I call it that. And stop telling us information that are not accurate. What were the charges and why were the charges withdrawn for the CEO, former CEO or not? And put us into your confidence. You gave us information that the NAC has confidential information with the CEO, uh, former CEO. You didn't give us the amount. It shows good to that confidential information. The media can come up with things because open governance, there's transparency, there's open line. Worst of all for us as parliamentary to read from the newspaper than for us to get it from you. Did you give the former, the, the, the firm that dealt with this, the, uh, the approval of the deal? Did, what did they say? The Maza, Maza firm. What did they say with the deal? Did they say it's fine? Did you consult with them? What is their view? Can I get a legal view or opinion, so to say, with the deal? Are they saying everything is hunky-dory for the CEO just to uh, be left like that? It's clear, gross negligence. It's clear that there's no consistency on the uh, council members. They do one to the, the next. They do 
Levin to the other, which is the CEO. It's a pref- it's a special who treat you as special like she's a queen. And why is this done not to all? You give us a, a picture that there's plus minus three million that you are going to spend. Why not? Because you've spent today. You called the the legal guy who's outside. You are going to pay him today to attend this meeting. He's here. The chairperson, Mam Zamini, introduced him. He's here. He's going to get paid because you've put us to this for us to have more legal issues that we must fight. Why not if you have to fight them? If we lose that three million for the sake of Simuti Silusan and Umkonyo, why not? Honorable Umkonyo, please try to try to round up. You want to take out how much? Yes, I'll, I'll yes. do that, Chair. I'll do that. I apologize. Oh, I apologize, <laughs> Chair. Chair, the employment and acknowledge, in fact, she acknowledge Uguti does a, 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 a confidential issues. I acknowledge that for, for now. Group uh, were 6.1. But I don't understand at the end of the day the confidentiality of these so called issues of six months or laptop that the media is telling us or anything, which is ECE. The Ubabu Stole failed, Dr. Stole failed to tell us. I think lastly, I want to put it to 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 you, Guti. What other agreement that you are not aware of? Because you did not put the amount. Yes, six months. Now, what other agreement that you are not aware of that you are going to do with the uh, CFO? Because now it's clear today is the 27. It's the last day. We, you'll come back to us with uh, any agreement that you are not aware of. And I put it to you again, Minister, this was not a deep forensic investigation. That was a deal investigation uh, that will make deal for others, but not for all. Lastly, mm-hmm. Chair, I think last, that is the last, I'll have you follow up, Chair, and I apologize to take time, but I have to because they took our time to give us an updated information. Others are not even updated. Why the NAC failed to provide Sarah with the letter dated 26 July? Because according to your information, uh, you dated 26 July 2021. Did you respond to, to Ubabunya Teller or not? And give us the correspondence if you have uh, uh, the date uh, 31st July 2021. The NAC should provide evidence and copies and to, de- to, de- to, to declare everything, especially to this expired project, surplus project that we are not aware of. Chef, for now, I'll have a second bite. I'll come back. Thank you very much. I'm, in, I'm, I'm emotionally uh, drained by what is happening with NAC. I usually uh, stay calm when I ask them today. I'm emotionally because they're undermining us, or maybe they undermine me as a member of the community. Thank you very much. There's no asking. We are a member of this committee. When I opened the meeting, I was very um, emotional about the 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 GBV and also about the, the white boy uh, in the university. So, as all you confirm that you also very emotional. But let's try to to be our good selves. Uh, mm. uh, your hand I'm must no, be I'll share. Apology, chair. On your end, that is, I'm no more. Maybe I'm not because I'm going on the last question, chair. The status. Can they tell us about the status of the Hawks uh, vis-a-vis the ESP and the NAC? They, they must tell us what is the status regarding the uh, PESP regarding the Hawks information. Can they give us that? Thank you. Apology, chair. Oh, okay. Uh, Honorable Veronica. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for the opportunity. I must um, agree that it is really a bit frustrating when you receive the updated documents after you've already prepared mental information, prepared your questions. Of course, my whole question line is now changed. And um, it, um, I don't want to come to this committee and seems as if I am not going to do my job. So um, with regards to the fact that the CEO was found now, or that the arrangement was um, that they came withdraw the charges, I find it very weird that um, 
There was findings from the public protector side against her where she was found guilty um, of the abuse of the expired project policy. And then there was a, quite a few um, findings where she was also implicated in this um, forensic. Um, if you compare that to the few, only two of the CFO, how is it possible that one person has been um, with less charges, has been found guilty, but the other person, um, is a, you've made an arrangement with that person? And um, I understand the cost, but did you not beforehand, was there not, um, did you not uh, uh, foresee that there will be financial implications? The AG is especially um, pointed out that there's no consequence management in um, the department, in the entities of the department. And this for me is a clear reflection. This person is now um, free to go and can now work in another department or another entity. Um, and and, and um, there's no record of any wrongdoing. This for me is not right. Um, and I would have thought that the minister maybe and the department um, could actually in such a case where there's a gross negligence and financial management, like with public funds as with the PSP funding, would have been able to um, also intervene. Um, this is uh, corruption that took place. Then also what is bothering me is the fact that the NSC is a public entity and um, the comment uh, where it says that the employee uh, acknowledges that she has in the course of her employment with the employer become privy to various confidential information relating to the employer. And um, this might, might make it seem, the fact that um, there's this secrecy, um, this should not be secrets. Um, and it, it would seem as if the CEO holds a sword over the entity um, and that there might be other people involved in illegal practices um, that are now not uh, exposed because it's not clear precisely why that was added. Um, then also um, the interim CEO uh, that was appointed after the contract of Ms. Mangope, um, um, it was mentioned that uh, there was an interim CEO appointed um, after the um, Ms. Mangope's uh, contract expired and after she resigned. Who was acting then while she was suspended. Um, with regards to the uh, surface policy and the uh, um, utilizing of funds from unplanned projects, uh, would it be possible that you can um, reflect on the changes with, that was made, even if you uh, provide us with the new uh, minute ver version of um, this uh, document? Um, and also, I agree with uh, Honorable Ch uh, Tsepo, is it a new document? Is it, um, is it a new policy per se, or is it uh, an, the old policy that has been um, amended? I also want to know why is there a need for such a policy? Um, and why are there uh, unclaimed funds? Um, what happens uh, in other entities where money is not spent? Um, did you benchmark with them? And what was your conclusion if you did? Um, then um, I also want to ask the, with regards to the uh, public protector, the recommendations have that. The recommendations regarding Sara and Mr. Nutella, has the, all of those recommendations be implemented because it's, um, he seems to differ. Um, and I also want the department, if they can maybe reflect, reflect um, on this, um, when this issue will finally be sorted out, because we are constantly receiving emails that seem to indicate that the matter is still unresolved. I have also written to the public protector to um, receive their view. But if we can get clarity on this, um, I think all of us is really will appreciate that. Um, yes, and then, um, okay, I will hand over to someone else. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Veronica. Honorable Sondi. Thanks, Chair. And greetings uh, uh, to Nyambos, uh, because of the SS Cuba. Chairman, I welcome the presentation. Otherwise, I won't be here wasting my time listening to something that uh, I can dismiss if I don't like uh, it to be presented to me. But because it is presented, uh, I have few questions. 
I have a few questions because I want clarity on something that uh, uh, I want to understand clearly. But otherwise, uh, the NAC, the presentation uh, of the NIC and the department uh, is clear to us, and I welcome it, Chair. Chair, one thing uh, on your opening remarks, um, I noted uh, that it is encouraging to note that the NAC has strategically prioritized funding projects that are focused on creating awareness around gender-based violence and femicide. On your remarks, uh, you touch on this issue, which all of us as South Africans in particular, who are observing uh, this sketch of uh, a, a, a gender-based violence against our women. But Chair, I have a few questions uh, in, in, in with regard to the CEO uh, in relation to uh, uh, Ms. Rosemary Mangope. She was suspended as CEO in February 2022. And my question is, why did the disciplinary inquiry take place eight months after? And was it a suspension with full uh, salary every month? If so, why? And the second uh, uh, chair is with regard to the to Mr. Michael Arenze and uh, uh, Ms. Chogos de Nukabe. They both withdrew themselves from the disciplinary inquiry, uh, from the disciplinary inquiry proceedings. Didn't they supposed to send their resignation letters before the date of the disciplinary inquiry proceedings? And uh, Chair, to the presentation of the department um, on uh, NAC, two questions quickly. Uh, what is the progress with the disciplinary case against the CFO uh, from the department, their view? So far, what is the progress uh, on the case of the CFO uh, on their side? And the second one, Chair, on the, on, the, on the department, what is the department's view on the appointment of an interim CEO, uh, Ms. Mario Mbinam Chembu, who is a council member? What are the implications in light of good government? Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Sir Bonga and Sonich. Honorable Madoman. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Greetings to the Minister, Deputy Minister, Honorable Members, the leadership of NEC, led by the Chair, the Department, the department officials, led by the DG and our staff members. Chair, let me also welcome the presentation from the department and the NEC. Now through the presentation, now I can see and I can compare what the media is speaking about on the issue of the settlement amount and what the department has presented to us today. Now I can see that some other times media, it's an influential, it's used as an influential thing. Some other times it doesn't report the correct things, but I understand because it's media. Because on your forwarded confidential information, you stated to us how much is it, Comrade, uh, uh, Honorable Mutango must also read. He's speaking to say every time he's reading, he's reading. It is there, Honorable Mklong, how much does it cost for the settlement amount of the six months, but I won't mention it. You'll just go there and read, Honorable Mklong. But my questions, it will be, the first question, it will be based on the departmental overview on NAC. My question, it will be, what factors could contribute a financial and an operational risk of the NAC due to allegation of pre- presidential, which is the employment stimulus, which is past disbursement. 
The other one, it will go to the issue of the basic innovation group investigation. Has the on NAC has the NAC reviewed utilization of unclaimed funds effective to ensure it complies with the PFMA and Treasury regulation, taking into consideration all the recommendations? What aspect constitute the key challenge? On public protector, in relation to the declaration of interest register for all NAC employees relating to the projects they had initiated since 2015 to manage conflicts, how many employees were found to be conflicted and what action ought to be taken on those who are conflicted if there are those employees who are conflicted? And the other question that I want to ask about is on the issue of the estimate of national expenditure, which indicates that allocation for coast employees remains unchanged from 2021-2022 at 23.5 million per year over the MTEF. If this allocation is adjusted for inflation, there is a real decrease in the allocation. What is the impact of this on staff morale? The other question that I want to speak about on slide 25 of the presentation to the committee, the NAC indicates that all senior position in the entity are filled. However, two of the most critical posts are occupied by employees in acting in these positions. These are positions of the chief executive officer and the chief financial office. As the CEO recently tendered her resignation, at what stage is the recruitment process for this position? When can the committee expect to see it being filled? When does the NAC foresee the disciplinary case against the CFO reaching the, into the conclusions? The last question, it will be, on the annual performance plan, how does the entity plan to address the international trade of cultural and creative sector to include provinces with a low percentage share? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Malomane. Honorable Adams. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, can you hear me, Chairperson? Yes, Honorable Member. Thank you, Chairperson. Chair Chairperson, let me firstly greet um, our members on the platform, the DM, the DJ, and the team, the staff, and uh, our colleagues. Chairperson, let me also uh, thank, thanks for the opportunity to raise questions. Firstly, Chairperson, let me thank NAC and BSEC for what they present to us today. Although I already said that um, uh, the NAC uh, visit to us or attendance before the committee uh, long overdue, as I would like to ask questions regarding presentation before us today. Chairperson, let me first um, start with my questions. My first question will be on slide 23. And this sec outline to the committee why it has permitted the NAC to lower the presentation of subsidy to be used for grant funding from 75% to 70%. If one looks to at the overview of the budget, the allocation for grant transfers is uh, 86.1 million rand. Given the wide range of disciplines, the NAC should be funding this amount is inadequate. The NAC notes that in 2021-22, it received many more applications that the budget allowed for approval. What is the revenue generation strategy going forward, given 
that the sector is only just starting to recover from impact of uh, COVID-19. And then, Chairperson, my next question, what was the total value of the 18 international bursary awarded to art uh, students to study ab abroad? Chairperson, and then Mangope, Nogabe, Arense, and Shangfut were suspended in February 2021, but the hearing process only started in December 2021. Um, what took the council 10 months before the process, process started while the alleged accused, um, the al alleged accused are being paid doing nothing? And there's another question, Chairperson. Let me quickly, yes. Um, in re relation to uh, uh, one of our comrades did raise, uh, sorry, members did raise that question. Let me go to another question that I have. What was, what has been the level of consultations undertaken by the NEC with the department in relations? to the appointment of the interim. That is basically the same question, Chair, but allow me to, I have uh, two more questions. Then I'm finished. What is the ANC, uh, NAC policy on settlement and what men's merits did the NAC use to warrant a settlement? And there is only one for this round. Uh, uh, chairperson, uh, yes, in relation to the leadership vacuum, what causes the entity to be in ICU? What are the lessons learned from the situation of the entity being in ICU as stated in the presentation? I will stop there. I will take another round. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable uh, Adams, Honorable uh, Sibia. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Greetings to everyone. Allow me to switch off my video because of connectivity. Thanks, Chair. Okay. Uh, Chairperson, uh, firstly, uh, I would like to appreciate the, the reminder from the chairperson that everyone in this meeting should be given a respect. My question, why did Councillor Arendse not withdraw from the disciplinary proceeding in the first place? The second one, how many candidates did you interview on the vacancy of CEO as well as CFO? Because your presentation only speak of one candidate. If uh, I am correct. Uh, we also note the increase in the number of applicants outweighing the funding. How is the entity working with the private sector and other funding institutions to increase funding for cultural creative sector? Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable um, Sibia. Honorable Dennis. Thank you, Honorable Dennis. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm sorry for the delay. I'm just trying to get into unmute. Um, Chairperson, um, 14 of my 16 questions have been covered by the members, my colleagues. I'll just ask two. I'll ask, I've got two more to ask. Um, and that relates to the uh, to the financial part, where I want to ask, and obviously I just want to say, yes, unfortunately, a baggage and a history, yeah, like some of other entities, and I'm glad they is on a table now, and I hope there is a speedily 
um, adjustment uh, to get the institution the entity back on track, Chairperson. I want to just refer to slide eight. Um, and that is about the board and the finance that is spent on the board um, that indicates from 869,389 rent to in 2019 financial year, it moved uh, to 3 million. 591,000. Chairperson, three financial years. Uh, I speak under correction, but it, it appears that this is an increase of 24%, an increase of 2.7 million rand in a three year cycle. That's the information, that's how I interpret the slide. I think the department can assist me with that percentage increase or the CFOs, the financial people. Um, but it's really a concern, Chairperson, that we are trying to find money for the programs and then the, 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 the increase to the, to, the, to the managers of the entity, the management is, is just too high. Secondly, Chairperson, um, the suspension of the CEO, uh, I just want to confirm if it's a suspension worth pay. And if it is a suspension with pay, then I also want was the suspension with pay. I want to know did uh, uh, maybe the DG can assist or the financial people if there's suspension in a department of management or staff, and they in they in there for a year or two on suspension. Do they get an increase when normal increases is applicable in a department? Do they automatically get that increases while they suspended? That's what I'm trying to confirm. And then I wanted just to note, and I speak under correction, it appears that whilst we had um, uh, uh, acting CEO, we're also paying, or while we have a suspended CEO on payment, we're also paying an acting CEO. I just wanted to confirm that. But I think we need to uh, remind the board that the benchmark of salaries and benefits need to be realistic and not be unreasonable compared to to um, to the programs that we are trying to fund, which is the core business of of the of, of the entity. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm covered with the other members. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you, Honourable Dennis. I'm 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 also covered with the uh, other members, but I'm also want uh, to raise and emphasize um, the relation to to the appointment of the uh, interim CEO. CEO Miss Marion Binam Tem, why did the entity appoint a council member as this undermines governance as a council member has an oversight role over the executive of the entity as it entails roles and responsibilities which should not be executed by one person and why does the entity use its council members for administrative task, uh, and also uh, <clears throat> I, would, I would also emphasize and uh, uh, ask this, what has been the level of consultation undertaken by the NAC with the department in relation to the appointment of an interim C CEO who is a council member? Uh, but the, the, the last uh, question that I want <clears throat> uh, to, to ask, how does the NGT plan to address the international trade uh, of cultural and creative sector to include provinces with low percentage share? I thank you. Uh, we, we do thanks. Uh, uh, to get this presentation from a department uh, in time and from NAC in time. Uh, next time you will, when you upgrade, you will know that we don't just upgrade and not to give us as members. I thank you. Uh, Chairperson of the NAC, with your team and then the team uh, of the minister, 
deputy minister, DG, after they finish the, the NAC. Chairperson of NAC must uh, tell us who must do what. Um, thank you very much, um, Honorable Chairperson, um, for this opportunity once again. And I also want to greet um, our Honorable Minister, um, Minister Nastim Tetwa, um, as, as he has joined us. Um, I'm going to start with some of the questions and then I will hand over Honorable Chairperson um, the other questions. Pardon me, Chair. Um, were, you, were you saying something, Chairperson? No, no, no. I didn't say anything. Go on. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I will hand over um, the other questions I've already um, allocated to the team, so we all know which sections we will be um, <clears throat> dealing with. Let me start with the last question um, that was asked um, by the Honourable Member as to why did the entity appoint a council member um, to be the interim council, I'm sorry, to be the interim CEO. Um, we were in the middle of a situation whereby the acting CEO um, had taken medical leave um, and it was something that you know happened, it was pretty sudden. And um, unfortunately for us, it literally was right in the middle of when the entity was um, in, um, excuse me, administering um, PSP. And we had, you know, we were, I think at this point, we had a system going, we were, we were going quite well. So we did not want a situation whereby we, you know, shook, you know, I think our, our administrative, um, you know, responsibilities too much. So what we did was we preferred to effectively get someone that was already um, familiar with PSP and of course familiar with PFMA um, as well. And we approached the department um, and we asked them if they could assist us in terms of seconding someone um, that could come and hold this position in the meantime whilst the, sorry, whilst the acting CEO had gone and made medical leave. In the initial period that the, um, the acting CEO was was going to be on medical leave for was um, originally anticipated to be six weeks. Um, so it was really, I mean, from our side, it was just saying we just need something that's short um, and, and someone that can be able to fill the position in quite quickly. Um, <clears throat> we then had a situation where um, the department did respond, and um, unfortunately, at the time, they were also very, very swamped. And um, they did indicate to the entity that, unfortunately, they, they, there was no um, resource that they could spare from their side um, to be able to actually fill this position. Um, council then um, came back and reconvened, and we then went and, again, you know, taking from the situation that we wanted to make sure that we got, um, you know, an individual that was very familiar with PSP to um, ensure smooth continuation of the PSP. Um, process. We then went within um, the council and we looked for a council member that effectively had the appropriate experience to be able to assist us through this period. And Mam Mariam Bina, um, you know, being already a council member um, of the NAC, um, excuse me, fits the position quite nicely because she had that strong financial um, expertise and skills and knowledge which was actually needed um, by the entity. So um, again, I do want to indicate that this was you know um, and and really, I think maybe you know unfortunately, we found ourselves in a situation whereby our acting CEO at the time, then um, you know um, her medical leave got extended much, much longer. I think we had probably something close to three extensions where um, you know, she would come back and say she's still not well, she still needed a bit more time. So unfortunately, we then have found ourselves in the situation whereby we then um, had to then appoint the interim CEO. We are in the process now because the disciplinary hearings um, have been complete, completed um, on both the CFO and the CEO. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, both the CFO and the CEO um, have basically, those disciplinary hearings have actually completed we then have found ourselves, um, you know, in a situation now where we are just about to engage with um, with DSEC um, in terms of, you know, us moving forward and doing the formal appointment of both the CFO and the CEO. So we will be 
hopefully starting that process, you know, as soon as, uh, and I'll probably actually anticipate because of the urgency of the situation that we'll start that, um, start that, uh, that process within the next week. And um, honorable members, we also, um, also just with regards to the um, interim CFO um, position as well, um, we also had a very similar situation whereby the acting CFO that we had, um, you know, then also had a family and a personal circumstance that, um, you know, and she came to us and, and requested that we excuse her from her position. And um, I guess fortunately by then we had actually done a bulk of the PSP work. So, um, and at least we already had the interim CEO that was in place. So she managed to then, um, you know, find an interim CFO that could basically assist us during this period um, that this, the, the previous um, acting CFO had been requested um, to, to take leave. So I think on that one, um, I've covered that question, um, honorable chairperson. Um, the next one that I want to um, address is the question that was asked with regards to <clears throat> was the suspension with pay. Um, I would like to confirm to the honorable member that yes, um, the suspension was with pay um, in accordance to the Labor um, Relations Act. Um, and then also there was a question around um, why the fees um, continue, sorry, increase from 869,000 to 3.5 million over the years um, and mainly um, I think one of the members it is very important to realize that council and um, the NAC council has got I think we're probably sitting at about 18 council members um, over and above that we are sitting with about 40 panel members and these are members that assist, assist, assist us in the adjudication of, um, of our applications and then, um, and during this particular period, we of course had the PSP that we were literally managing during a period whereby the leadership of the NAC had of course been under suspension. So we needed, I think as, as council to really, really, um, you know, take a closer look and ensure that the entity found itself, you know, coming out of the mess that we had actually um, found ourselves in. Also just outside of PSP as well, um, <clears throat> The entity was also dealing, when we came in, we also found ourselves having to deal with um, two public protector matters, um, Honorable Chair, Chair. Um, and not only the public protector matters that we also were dealing with, we also had a, a very big provincial partnerships um, project that we also then had to manage, with, which also nearly caused quite a storm, but thank goodness we were able to, um, to avert that. Um, we then also had our annual call for funding, um, which literally saw unprecedented, um, you know, numbers um, in terms of people that had actually applied to the NAC. This was the largest, um, you know, number of applications we had ever received. Um, and then over and above that, we then had the disciplinary hearings um, as articulated that basically we were then um, involved in trying to just ensure got underway, um, you know, over the year. So that really is what led to the increased number of, um, of meetings because we had to make sure as council that we were on the ball and we did not drop the ball on any of these items. Um, I'd like to then move over and ask the interim CEO, Marion, if she can please go into dealing with the expired um, policy, expired surplus policy versus the unutilized um, funds policy. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Chair. Subsequent to the PP's uh, report and remedial actions, the action of amending the expired projects policy and surplus policy, funds policy, uh, was undertaken. The new policy was amended to remove the inconsistencies that were there and to ensure that there was a process for the utilization of the surplus funds similar to the normal call for funding. That is, instead of only the officials uh, going and identifying the projects from the failed submissions and, and doing everything through council without the panelists, that would be changed. And council approved that. On reading it, the, the, the policy, the amended policy, we noticed two things about it that could not necessarily be completely consistent with the provisions of the PFMA. The first one is the funds that end up being, I mean, surplus funds, 
are funds that were allocated as earmark funds for specific grants or for specific to specific arts or artist organizations. They get to be termed surplus after the, those awardees have failed to complete the projects for various reasons. And the entity takes reasonable steps uh, to a very large degree to try to assist those grant awardees to complete these projects. But it does happen that they don't actually complete the projects. That's the first thing. The second thing, it is never after the end of the, the financial year in which the funds were allocated to the NAC that these funds are actually converted to surplus funds. And the question then is, what is a surplus fund? Because if there's a commitment and there's a failure within a commitment, it doesn't mean you have achieved your objectives. It simply means that you probably had chosen or the people that were chosen at the time had other challenges that they could not foresee, but you have not completed your work in terms of uh, supporting the arts industry, creating jobs in that industry. And the job creation in that industry is not about the person on the stage. There's more to it than that. They are the others that are supporting to get that person to that stage. It is then that we said it, the policy needs actually to be reviewed and we align it to the PFMA, the definition of a surplus in terms of the PFMA, and the issue of a failed commitment that doesn't mean you have done the work that you are supposed to do. And we then drafted a policy that is called the utilization of unclaimed funds, which deals with the fact that it's not a surplus, strictly speaking. Two, you haven't finished or accomplished what you needed to accomplish, even judging by the volumes of those who apply and that they cannot get funding. And from an admin perspective, we finalized that policy, but it still has to go through the council process. If that policy is approved by council, we are also recommending that you do, the council abolishes the expired uh, projects and surplus funds policy. Because in terms of a surplus portion of it, if it was strictly meeting those uh, definitions, you need then to go to section 53 of the PFMA, because it says if you have a surplus, before you can utilize a surplus, you have to get treasury approval. There isn't a space where you can use what was, com what was committed before and then say now it is a surplus and I don't go to treasury and I go only if it's a surplus from the operations. Uh, I think, Chair, uh, that is all I can say at this stage, unless it is guaranteed. Um, thank you very much, CEO. Um, before I move on to um, Dr. Stoller to cover us on um, the other matters, I just wanted to add with regards to um, the, the remuneration of um, council that please do note that um, the jump um, from the eight hundred, so from the eight hundred thousand through to the two point five, um, also happened during the period where the former um, council was. So that was literally we only then incurred three months um, of 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 that. So I just would like for that to be noted as well. Um, Doc, can I then um, request you to please move on? You're also going to be covering the international trade matter as well, um, over and above um, the CEO settlement issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson, and thanks, Honorable Members, and again, also welcome to the Honorable Minister. I'm going to start, actually, uh, in reverse with something that is really exciting us, um, which is the question on the international cultural trade, an area that I personally am very much exposed to. Um, uh, you would have noticed, Honorable Members, that when this interim CFO was presenting our APP, there is a very specific line item about our commitment as this council to uh, have an in increased exposure of our cultural practitioners to international markets. I think we have committed that we will sign three 
um, markets, international markets across all our art disciplines, agreements, where we would have already a slot to present, whether it's dance, whether it's theatre, whether it's music, at, at the identified um, uh, markets um, around the world, uh, including uh, uh, on the continent as well. We have even started with one now that is in um, Tenerife, uh, that is a multidisciplinary um, uh, um, market that involves all our art disciplines, where we now have an, an expression of interest. Actually, we are supposed to be going to an MOU very soon, which would mean we will then be calling um, um, requests for practitioners to, to then submit to, to that market. Uh, where we would have already identified a slot. We won't necessarily choose the artist for them or the practitioner for them, because we want them to choose. Our agreement is to say you'll give slots to all our art disciplines that we can send. So we have even put a budget for that. I think it's in excess of $2 million every year that we are able to do that. And, and that cuts across everything uh, in that. And, and let me link that also to the question around the involvement of, um, of, of provinces. You'll also see that um, we have a, a, a skewed bias to the um, uh, the other provinces, except for KZN, uh, Western Cape, and and, and Hague, where we have said that everything that we are doing, forty percent of of um, of of the funding must be allocated to, the, to 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 those marginalized provinces, and that the sixty percent is then shared between the other three provinces, but also that Hague uh, won't get more than the others. So um, we, we are very much excited about um, making sure that we do have presence uh, anywhere where we can actually have our, um, our practitioners go, 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 going there. Um, there, there. There was a question around why did it take so long? And I think it's a very important question for the, the forensic investigation and for um, the, the processes to start. Uh, you would recall, honorable members, that um, immediately after um, we, 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 we started this, we had a press conference. I think there was also one at, at, at um, GIC, um, uh, where we then said we are going out to, 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 to secure a forensic firm. But at the same time, DSEC was also doing the same thing. And then it got to a point where we also had a discussion with DSEC, and I think DSEC then withdrew. Uh, theirs and then said they will then take the cue from what comes out of the uh, uh, out of the NAC. The process then started. I mean, it's an internal procurement process. We are we are not involved as uh, as council members. Uh, um, um, up until when procurement did its first process and they reported to us, it was a disaster. I must be I must be honest. It was a disaster. We realized that uh, we still have another work to do on the supply chain. Um, and I, we don't want to undermine um, service providers, but it, it was something we couldn't believe what we were being presented. When we then had to meet with those that they had, they had recommended, they didn't even know what, what the, the scope was. And we asked them, but then why did you say you're going to do this when you did not even know the scope? So we started all over again. That's how then we got um, MSRs. And that was a very highly competitive process. They were big big firms there that came to that. But it also then meant that Mazars had to start from scratch and go into the GMS system. And we were quite amazed by the speed and, 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 and how they quickly understood how the GMS system worked. And they drew reports, they could find discrepancies. Only when they made sense of that, then they began to interview each and every person involved in the value chain, including former council members, staff, before they could even do, the, do their first draft report. So that process alone was very long, but it, it was an elaborate and necessary process. When they were done, then they also then did the, the charges. And that now is left to, and also they didn't do the charges. We then had to now do another process of procuring the, the, the firm that was gonna do the, the presiding and also procuring the firm that was gonna do the prosecution. That alone was its, its own process. We started with the prosecution firm because they needed to then have the, then they needed to have the, the report first and understand it themselves again, ask questions before they could see whether there's anybody who needed to answer and anyone who needed to be charged. Then they threw the charges. Then we had to then um, um, also um, inform those that 
had been implicated and the process then started like that as you can see you begin to see action really happening towards the end of the year and then the hearings starting so that really is the the plausible explanation uh, that one uh, can give with regard to that and um, i just need to just if you allow me um, chair, just to check again my notes on what the chair said um, I, I must respond to um just a second I, I then we need to go back to the i think we had, we, we had discussed the, the issue about why then CFO, CEO this and CFO a different process? These hearings were, were happening simultaneously. We also had to be guided by good corporate governance that we can have the same um, presiding officer presiding on both, on both issues because then um, they might then be biased once they've heard the other story and then by the time the other one is sitting in front of that presiding officer, the presiding officer already has an opinion on that. So. It, it was run by two different presiding officers uh, uh, parallel. So um, uh, what was happening in the other was different from what, what, what was happening in the, in the other process. So we cannot then say we would have then compared um, uh, uh, that. And, and also, they were also represented by different um, um, attorneys themselves. So the other one probably decided that they want to go full force with the hearing and the other one maybe felt that no well, uh, it's not necessarily let's, 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 let's see how we can get out of it so that is really the one can explain why there's a different settlement and um, if, if 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 um the cfo had probably brought in the same thing we would have also dealt it with it and maybe re reach a different conclusion and um, I, 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 I wouldn't say there, there is a there is a comment that honorable adams uh, makes and and i think it's a very important comment to address um, honorable members, the NAC is very thin on the ground with regard to, um, I think there is about three managers, three managers uh, at the NAC, and, and also at various uh, levels of, of, of capabilities. I think one, one would say that there's probably one that is stronger than the others. Um, for instance, if, if, if I was just um, in a second, uh, uh, explain why it was also difficult even if um, the, the acting CEO had come back. The acting CEO then, which is um, the, the, the manager, um, arts development manager, leads a very important function at the NAC. And even us removing her from that position to act at that time left a big vacuum in a very important function of arts development because there is really no managers there. There is um, as development officers or, or, or what they call yeah. um, uh, and and when she then comes back also at the same time she comes back when we are about to do our very first ever annual call for funding after the PSP and that also meant that we I'm not giving now the reasons why she didn't come back to that actually but I'm just trying to point paint point a picture that even if she had proceeded to go back and act we were going to have a Serious also challenge just on the doing the, 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 the annual call for funding, which we did uh, uh, very, very well. And you will also see that um, the numbers of people applying to our annual call for funding have drastically increased because we have removed a lot of barriers to entry. And that alone means that we are going to be more inundated with more numbers of applications than ever before. Our target is to, I mean, you saw the, the presentation by, um, by the CFO, is to increase from 302 applica um, successful applications to 1,700 uh, by year five, which means we'll be getting about 10, 20,000 applications. So far, we are getting around 4,000, which was the highest number, by the way, um, since, since the NAC. So those are the, some of the issues that we are, we are, we are really trying to, to, to get to working uh, but we are also excited with um, the the road ahead once we put all of this um, uh, uh, behind us and and the issue of funding the vulnerable groups and marginalized arts is one thing that uh, the, the new strategy we put f emphasis on uh, including our funding guidelines and the and, and the criteria for the adjudication uh, including the numbers 
on how many we are, we are focusing. The introduction of indigenous arts uh, in the next um, uh, three years, where we say we want to introduce two indigenous arts uh, forms uh, funded by, the, by this organization, is our realization that we cannot just be dealing with mainstream arts when we know that there are provinces that thrive on things that have never been seen before as really art forms, and we want to put those art forms uh, on, on stage, uh, uh, whether it's stage or wherever, you know. But uh, so in, in a nutshell, um, th this is how we have um, dealt with some of, of the issues. Thank you, Chen. Um, thank you very much, um, Doc. Um, if I can please ask the CFO um, if he can deal with um, the questions related to the decrease in um, budget in terms of the grant um, and the staff um, remuneration as well, and the staff morale. Jason? Sorry, Chair, I just excuse myself to the loop quickly. Can you just repeat that? Um, perhaps maybe let me let me ask um, then let me ask CEO to please deal with that one. Um, the question related to the decrease, the effect that the decrease has had, um, the decrease in budget that um, it has had on staff morale, and of course just in relation to also our grants as well. Um, you know, with our grant funding being decreased from seventy five percent to um, to seventy percent for allocations um, directly to, to, to beneficiaries. Thank you, Chair. The, the reduction in grant allocation of 5%, in fact, the proportion of the grant utilized for, grant, for, for actual funding of the arts, artists and arts program, came about because there was a challenge within the entity that needed additional funds with the PSP uh, situation in 2021-22. The department was informed that at a later stage uh, because the administration side submitted a request from EXCO to move those funds to cover the shortfalls that have been identified uh, before even requesting the department to actually approve that because it needs to be approved upfront by the department. Uh, and it had a reason because of the challenges of the PSP, the overcommitments, and the fact that they were trying to clean the situation and, and try to, to manage the situation. Yes, it did have an impact on the final amounts to be distributed because what happened basically is the operations side used more than that, that they had to, to, to use. In terms of staff morale, so it's difficult to actually say the staff morale is as a result of the, the poor staff morale is as a result of the change in funding. The last year, the, the, the COVID, situation, the number of people in the office that actually contracted this, the situation and a number of other things had a contributing factor and it still does continue to have a contributing factor to the staff morale. Uh, some exercises and support is being given by HR in, in terms of those. And also we lost uh, one or two members with, amongst the staff besides those who lose fam immediate family members, but not themselves. So it is very difficult to link it only to money. It is the situation of the health and other things. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much, um, CEO. And then the last question that needs to be answered, um, Doc, if you can please um, answer the question related to why Councillor, um, former Councillor Nokabe and former Councillor Arense um, resigned on the day of the hearing um, instead of um, resigning before? Oh, um, Chair, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I didn't think that we would answer that per se because um, it's them, them, unless, unless if the question was, 
why did we not ask them to step down and uh, once there were findings and uh, pending whatever the outcome is because it's their decision yeah so i, I think that would be my response I, 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 we wouldn't have an answer on, on their behalf with regard to that um, thank you very much, Chair. I think that concludes um, our answers, um, unless there's something else that we may have missed, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you so much, uh, DJ. Thank you so much, uh, Chairperson, with your colleagues. DJ, after DJ is DM, after DM is Minister. Do we still have DG of this department? If uh, he's not on the platform, uh, can I give it to our DM? No, sorry, sorry, Chairperson. Um, can I come in? Yes, please. Uh, maybe, Chairperson, I need to start with the clarity around the investigation, forensic investigation. At that time, um, I think the honorable member was was regarding it, uh, labeling it as a, a deal uh, submission, which is uh, totally wrong to cast aspersions about the quality of work done by a very qualified, well-established uh, company. Uh, that we believe uh, did the work it had to do. Now, implementation of their recommendations uh, cannot be then uh, put on their shoulders as a forensic company. And I think uh, honorable member will know uh, that uh, that uh, are two, those are two separate processes. And uh, to attack the company's integrity is incorrect uh, because now we are undermining the work that they've done. And number two, that uh, unless the honorable member, of course, has forensic uh, expertise that the company has, uh, and therefore then can be able to, to judge their work in terms of their own expertise as forensics. If that is not the case, then I think we must accept that they've done their work as they were expected, and the implementation then is left to the board and the council uh, on how they implemented that, and they have a, the council has explained that. I think, Chairperson, uh, then there was an issue on uh, the the the. the decision on the issue of the PPSA vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the mother's report, whether these serious findings had uh, to deal with uh, the guilty or not. I think Chairperson they have responded in relation to how they dealt with the public protector's report. And then um, the department uh, understanding is that uh, there was even a letter of apology that was forwarded to to Mr. Uh, uh, to Sarah and Mr. Nantella, uh, on this matter um, by the council, and uh, then um, of course that uh, there are maybe issues that uh, the complainant is still not happy with. I believe that that is what the council then continues to engage uh, with them. Uh, officially uh, so that uh, if there is still any matter outstanding or that is not happy with is then addressed but in my understanding after we engaged with the board there wasn't a decision to implement fully the recommendations of the public protector uh, including the revision of this expiry project policy as well as the communication to sir in relation to the apology and therefore then the commitment to implement this process. That is understanding of the department as was raised on this issue. Now, then the, the issue of the view of the department about the appointment of a council member uh, to act as a CEO. Uh, I think um, we, we are on record, Chairperson, 
uh, in discouraging this particular uh, culture. We, based on our experience about council members uh, being made to act as CEO. However, the board has indicated that they had a challenge in terms of the absence of available executive managers to do that. Uh, from our side, we were indeed approached and uh, we had uh, no one uh, from the department and uh, neither when we looked at the other entities on who can be released so that uh, that person can go and act. So the board had to then uh, make that uh, decision uh, with an understanding that uh, when the exec one of the executives come back, we'll then uh, reassume uh, that responsibility. Uh, but the board then has explained on their side why that has not happened. And it's not just about NAC on this issue. We are discouraging uh, the habit of any board member to become an acting CEO, um, always encouraging that uh, there must be an executive member who does so. But that is what happened in this instance. And uh, I think um, we, we still believe that uh, they will find a way to get the executive uh, to be the one who act in, in this particular position as, as a council as they work towards finalizing the, the appointment of a CEO. And then um, the issue of the department, uh, Honorable Zoda raised about status of the CFO. Um, uh, I think the board uh, and the council of the NAC has explained this issue uh, in detail in terms of where they are with that process. And then um, I think they will then update us once the whole matter is now uh, resolved. Uh, it was a case handled by NAC about the issue of the disciplinary process of the CFO, not by the department. Um, and then, of course, the issue of um, uh, what could contribute to the uh, risks uh, of the PSP uh, or factors that could contribute to the risks associated with the PSP. Uh, we believe that a uh, person, uh, based on all the lessons learned, uh, including what the Auditor General had indicated as gaps, uh, that the risk-based metrics with mitigations uh, needs to always be done first before any implementation of the of the PSP. And um, these factors will, of course, include whether there is proper planning uh, before the implementation, whether the systems and the monitoring uh, measures and controls are in place uh, before such displacement can be done. So we always encourage that um, we do first have a data risk matrix, but also to have then uh, the deliverables uh, that are put in place uh, before as we sign the MOU with the entity to make sure that that MOU then clearly states what are the expectations and the deliverables and the reporting and monitoring um, standards that are expected and the reports that should be submitted uh, to the department, as well as then the meetings that we constantly have uh, with the entities as they report on the status of implementation of the PESP. Um, Chairperson, I think, um, was that the department consulted in the appointment of the, the interim CEO. I think I've responded to that, Chairperson, uh, in our engagement with them uh, and indicated how, and then they ended up with the CEO, uh, the interim CEO. Uh, but that uh, we stand by the fact that uh, that culture should always be discouraged. And then, um, Chairperson, I think um, on the questions uh, related or directed to the department, uh, I, I have uh, uh, answered those questions unless any of my colleagues um, uh, want to respond. DDG Mandi Sachipadamba or DDG um, uh, DDG Kumalo, if uh, any comment they want to make, if I have left anything else. Thank you, DG. We still have a DM and, and 
the minister, they must uh, try to rush. Uh, we don't have enough time. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. We, without wasting your time, Chair, the substantive issues have been responded to by the DG in relation to the department. I will allow the minister to come in so that we don't waste your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, DM. Uh, Honorable the minister. Yambos. Thanks, Chair. And uh, let me thank uh, members of the Portfolio Committee for uh, the, <coughs> their work. Yeah, their oversight work and uh, the, the calling to account uh, government. And I think uh, uh, that kind of exercise is uh, <clears throat> will always strengthen uh, governance generally uh, within the entities and, and the department. Um, Apology, Minister. Can we see your face through you, Chair? Okay. Yeah, I, I hope it's. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it sounds it, like things it, believing. It, it, it's <laughs> you see the face in Congo. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jay, I think I think uh, the the criticisms uh, which have uh, been labelled and issues which have been. Uh, areas of emphasis uh, directed to, to NAC, I think they are justified. And uh, I think that uh, some of the things uh, need to be, uh, I mean, the NAC would have to go back uh, to the drawing boards and, and, and actually uh, look deeply uh, in, in, in the areas uh, which have been raised because the expectation is that the uh, uh, entity should be perfectly run and uh, have as much as possible uh, faultless uh, in, in what they do. Um, well, uh, I, 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 I want to say, Chair, that in any organization, one important thing is stability. Uh, now, if there's no stability, you always talk about interim acting and so on, uh, you, you, you lose track uh, in, in what you're supposed to do. And therefore, uh, I think what, what has been committed to do, uh, that is having proper permanent senior management uh, within, the, the, within uh, NAC is quite important. I would, I would want to say, Chair, that the... The, 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 the exercise uh, by this uh, independent uh, uh, body, a uh, forensic uh, body uh, here, Mazas, is, is quite important. It's quite important because uh, uh, it was there, uh, it's factual. And uh, so far, since the release of the report on the 13th of November, there hasn't been any a challenge to it, I mean, a proper legal challenge uh, to it and so on. And it doesn't help the NAC to have this report and have it out there. The most important thing uh, are the uh, steps which need to be taken so that tomorrow we do not find ourselves in the follies uh, of the past. But all in all, I think, uh, that I would end there and uh, thank uh, you and uh, all the members, including uh, the member who called me Nyambos uh, uh, Upambat. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Uh, honorable members, uh, can I take this opportunity that uh, once uh, we do understand that we are having a new board uh, which is having new members, uh, as we are uh, pointing out uh, these gaps, I'm, 
I'm hoping uh, we, we, as time goes on, we'll get each other. Uh, I can now say that chairperson of the NEC, the minister is uh, uh, alluded to everything. And now I want to release you with your colleagues. Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Chairperson, point much. of order. Oh. Honorable Strong. Chair, I thought I, I see point of order, but I thought we'll have the second bite as you've stated. I thought you're going as the norms, the culture of the I committee. Didn't say, I didn't say today that we are going to have, because, because of the time, uh, Honorable Strong. Uh, that's why uh, I even given the DM and minister uh, to try to close the gaps. I didn't call the second uh, bite today. I, I was managing the time and there was no one uh, before the minister. And the norm of our, our committee, when the invitees responded, Immediately that I'm saying minister and deputy minister, uh, sometimes uh, honorable members, they do indicate that before that, I'm having a, a follow-up. Uh, now I don't know what to do, because I okay, even... Like... Honorable Sean? <laughs> Sorry, Chair. Can I propose we forward all the follow-up question to... Yes. Uh, who's this? Um, and Our it, secretary, no, okay. no, not not the formal question directly to Uncha Abias to Uncha, but then we'll take it from there. I thought the minister got a t-shirt. I'm losing the cake now. I'll, I'll ask the deputy minister to buy me a cake. He she did not wear a t-shirt. Thank you. Because now I've explained why I'm dressing like that. Uh, you like you like sweet things. So we'll get the cake yes. from... Sorry, the Chair. Party. Sorry, Chair. Honorable Mshong is wearing a pink shirt. I mean, really. <laughs> yes, yes. No, 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 no T-shirt. No netball T-shirt. Only face. a pink shirt. I mean. your face, Honorable Mshong. Show your face. Uh, Minister, you can't let it. I am wearing a netball T-shirt. in the platform. You are still in the platform. <laughs> Uh, honorable uh, members, thank you so much. Uh, we will you will do that. Jam will take care of those questions. Um, uh, NEC delegation led by Ms. Uh, Lamini. Uh, uh, now I do release you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson and um, Minister and Deputy Minister and all the members of our team. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Now, honorable members, with these three minutes left, uh, we have a uh, minute which uh, you adopted the agenda that we must continue with the minutes. Uh, this um, somebody who's always guiding me, uh, watching the watchdog of the of the parliament. Uh, she is proposing that can we defer minutes? Let me hear from honorable me members. There's a legacy hand of pink shirt here. Honorable members, do you allow me to close this meeting? And sometimes I don't know. What is going on? I read both minutes. I'm satisfied with the minutes, but I want to um, suggest that someone propose and second the adoption of the minutes. Thank you. They, are, they don't speak. You've got right to jump. No one is raising hand here. It's always like that when we're coming to the minutes. Honorable members. Yes, Honorable Mishong. Let me save the meeting today. I move for the adoption of the minutes. Thank you, Honorable Mishong. Honorable Adams. Uh, Chairperson, uh, thank you for the opportunity. 
to second on the proposal of Honorable Ms. Longo. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Members. Uh, uh, honorable Members, uh, can also again take this opportunity. Uh, what are you doing, Jam? Sorry, Jam. Chair. Sorry, Chair. Okay. Uh, the minutes have been adopted. Let me take this opportunity to thank the collective of this uh, committee. You know, honorable members, uh, we are all human. Sometimes we do make errors. We do uh, speak like any uh, other member on human being, but immediately that we correct each other. To me, I'm always feel uh, proud that uh, whilst I'm given this opportunity to chair, I'm, I'm leading uh, leaders also. So when we solve uh, problems amicable, it's always easy uh, to, to do our work as uh, people who are doing oversight. I'm taking this uh, to, to say thank you to all of you honorable members. In future, when there are problems and a uh, misunderstanding in the committee, we need uh, to, to handle each other as leaders because all of us were are leaders. And uh, I'm, I'm saying today we've made a good uh, a, a contribution and the, the waiver and the understanding of our job uh, because we're all interesting to get to understand the work of this NAC, which we all, the majority of us, we've seen the gaps that um, we wanted that uh, irrespective of what they are presenting, uh, we want to get to, to the issues. I'm taking this opportunity to say thank you, honorable members, and the meeting is adjourned. Bye-bye. Yeah, I'm going to go to the meeting. Yeah, yeah. The meeting is closed. Thank you so much. You are... Yeah, Mom Sabia. You owe me a cake now. Honorable Sabia, they used to do this with Honorable Malomane and the Honorable Mamabulo. This is not new in this committee. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, bye. Honorable bye. Member. Bye. bye. Take over the weekend. Bye bye. Bye.